Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Sea Stories. What are Sea Stories? Sea Stories are tall tales generally told among sailors and I got a group of sailors with me to tell our own sea stories. Uh, as always, we like to tell our 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 sea stories with uh, while drinking a couple of beers and the theme for this month as requested by our guest is uh, beers that made you love drinking beer, I think. Yeah, or made you start drinking beer, whatever. Or made you start whatever drinking works. beer. Whatever um, works. So, with since it's a pretty unique uh, beer theme, I'd like to hear your story about why you chose your beer as well. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but my name is Adam Herrera. I'm a 10-year Navy veteran, and today I'm drinking a Blue Moon. And I know, you know, people are going to say, you know, Bud Light, Budweiser, Coors Light, etc. is like the the beer that every you drank that made you get into drink. Uh, pretty much, you drink those beers to get drunk, and you want to get drunk. But Blue Moon is the first beer that I had that I was like, "Man, this beer tastes fantastic!" And now I love drinking beer for the, you know, the flavors and everything. So right. uh, I'm choosing Blue Moon. What's going on, Andy? How are you doing? And uh, tell us about your beer. Yeah, I'm good, Adam. Uh, good to be here. As always. Um, Today I'm drinking, since I couldn't find the, the OG uh, good soda pop, Miller Genuine Draft, <laughs> oh. um, many people of the uh, delinquent youth of the 90s uh, started drinking beer at high school parties. I went for the uh, Miller Light, you know, since that's the most adjacent brew. So, yeah. Uh, Drew, how you doing, man? What are you drinking? Take us down memory road. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. I'm doing great. So, um, this beer made me appreciate beer beyond, you know, kind of like what Adam said, right? You usually drink your Coors Light, your Bud Light, you want to drink it to get hammered, right? This beer let me know there's a lot more depth to beer. Um, I like to think of this one as Andy's worst nightmare. <laughs> but this is the 60-minute IPA from Dogfish Head. You know, I drank this beer and... It changed my perception of like, holy crap, like beer can be so much more than just water. So <laughs> um, I'm excited to drink this beer. I haven't drank in a very long time. Um, so let's get into it. Joe, what's up, man? How you doing? What are you drinking? Pretty good. Pretty good, man. Uh, uh, I am drinking a beer that uh, Most of us did probably, you know, have one of our first ones was this, but maybe in a different way. Uh, this would be like maybe the first time you like change the oil in the car you bought and uh, your dad like, you know, grabs one out of the refrigerator and gives it to you when you're, you know, 16 years old or shit. Maybe when you're 14, you're, you help your your buddy's dad do some like, you know, crazy ass job out in the, you know, the yard or something. I don't know. Fill in the blank, dude. I don't know what the fuck you guys did, but I he may have been like, hey. You guys want to crack a cold one? And you and your buddy were like, fuck yes. <laughs> you know, and then you got to drink a beer with the cool dad, you know. It wasn't to get drunk. It was just to, you know, write a passage kind of stuff. But uh, for a lot of us, that beer was the Budweiser, the king of beers. <laughs> uh, I understand that, you know, it is one of the more expensive of the shittier beers. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, obviously I didn't, you know, partake in this throughout, you know, a lot of my high school career or even my naval career, but, uh, you know, it is one of those things he's kind of, you know, more like a rite of passage beer. I guess it, I, I, I didn't become an alcoholic when I was like 14. So I just want to make that clear <laughs> before anyone's like, yeah, well, Joe's fucking beer was the one that's fucking weird. <laughs> weird dad gave to him for <laughs> mowing the lawn but no uh but yeah you know you get the idea and uh with that being said mr josh cole what do you have for us today bud well <clears throat> let's see beer that got me drinking or liking beer i tell you what um i'm gonna i'm probably gonna have to i'm probably gonna have to contribute that to some mad dog getting sick off of that so i switched <laughs> to beer but um I am drinking uh, the Mickey's uh, Fine Malt Liquor Hand Grenades tonight. <laughs> um, I think back then I would only get it in the 40s, but um, we would just share it with like some friends, you know. It wasn't like nothing crazy. Um, but uh, 
yeah. two bucks back then, probably. Yeah, man, it's so. awesome. And then you got, got the picture things, you know, the picture, the picture puzzles. <laughs> you can spend hours trying to figure those things out. As some of us, but you know, I don't want to uh, bore you with my stuff. We have an exciting guest, and um, I'm excited to introduce him to y'all. So if you're ready, I want to introduce to you, Mr. No, no, we don't call each other by that, right? No. We're, we're enlisted guys. <laughs> no, so no. FC J Duggar. And he brought a beer tonight, so we'll help he'll have to tell us about his beer. All right, Mr. Uh, FC Duggar, what do you think? So uh yes, I was uh an FC. Uh I picked up FC one right before getting out. Um I was a Sea Wiz style. I did have a surface warfare. Um <laughs> but the the beer that I chose is a beer that I couldn't drink it at the time that I fell in love with it, but uh, I don't I don't know. In Texas, they played this movie like all the time when I was a kid, and it was Smokey and the Bandit. And so they were trying to get Coors from one place to the other. And so I was like, oh, when I get old enough to drink a beer, that's what I'm going to drink. <laughs> so I am drinking. You can't see it. There it is. The Coors, the banquet of beers in the, in the bottle. I prefer it in the can, but uh, they had a sale, so I got it in the bottle. <laughs> Can't hit on that. Um, real quick, before I forget, we got merch. We're all wearing our t-shirts, some of us. If you're interested in some of our merch, I'll drop the links down in the show notes. Um, before we get into our interview with Jay, uh, you know, we're me and Jay were, were chatting, uh, DM each other back and forth, and he sent me an interesting picture. And so I want to kick off with this uh just one second i'm gonna share my screen <laughs> no can you guys see that <laughs> okay jay for our audio audience why don't you describe what we're looking at so when you were a kid there were candy necklaces and the candies look like little oreo or uh cheerios right but they were real hard like a sweet tart material yeah and uh it had that like rubber string and you would just bite on it and and so <clears throat> this was we did some operation where we went up north to canada and uh, we stopped in halifax and it was fc1 haney akuna of course because that was my road dog and I forget one other person was with us and we stopped in this candy store because somebody wanted to get some candy for their kid. And, you know, the guy behind the counter, I mean, they had everything, garbage pail kids, stickers. I mean, they had everything. So uh, I saw that kind of sitting on a shelf in the background. So I was like, oh, I got to have that. And I uh, took it back to the ship. Now, mind you, the, the back of it doesn't it's not a thong it doesn't go up the crack right so you, you don't get like chocolate covered candies right <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> it's, it's kind of like a jock strap right so you know of course we go to the bar we get you know our drinks in and we head back to the ship and uh you know everybody's you know feeling a little liquid courage so you know everybody's like oh put it on man you know let's mo model it for us so I've got like full deployment bush going on. So like the hairs are sticking out through the candies and everything. It's like, it's disgusting. So I run around the birthing area and I've got the, I mean, it sounds like the candy's like, you can hear it moving as I'm running through the bird and I'm like no wearing nothing else but this candy, right? Like a rattlesnake. <laughs> yes. And so there were people that were on duty that were sleeping <laughs> and that were waking up. Everybody's like, it's it, it like turned into a party. Like everybody's like, watching me run around in this thing. And then I don't know who, but somebody pulls out some cash and I'm going to save his name. I'm not going to say his name, but they offered to pay him $300 to eat a piece. <laughs> well, the Navy has a stereotypes and some of those stereotypes. between, between betw let's just say that area between the front and the back. That's where he had to eat this piece <laughs> of candy from. <laughs> so, oh no. <laughs> they got the three hundred dollars. They gave it to him, put it in his shirt pocket. He got, and I put one leg up on like the middle <laughs> rack so that he could access that region. 
And he <laughs> mm. he went mm-hmm. nose, just buried his nose into it to try and get that piece of candy out. Mm. And he did it. He got mm. it. But he kind of bruised my gooch because he uh, <laughs> he bit down pretty hard. <laughs> But uh, he got his three hundred dollars. But to come to find out, it was three hundred Seychelles rupees. So it was like thirty American dollars. Oh, no. <laughs> you <terrible That's> <laughs> it, it wasn't me. But in the background, Haney the whole time, he's like trying to get the right positioning. Haney's like gagging in the background, like almost about to throw up, and he's just like, "No, don't do it! Don't do it!" But he he did it. He he got it. Yeah, and he he got pink eye too. I bet. <laughs> he got all kinds <laughs> of stuff. Oh man, that's a classic Navy Sea story right there. If I ever heard one, I got some yeah. pictures of 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 one of our fellow shipmates in a in a in a thong hanging from the uh, different piping and birthing. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anybody Chaply would want to was, see those. That song was also purchased, what, overseas in a vending machine? I, I think so, yes. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> kind of weird. So, it, all, it just takes crazy one generation, st- one generation yeah. of, of, of crew on a ship to just go back to <laughs> right, like, exactly. yeah, yeah, now we're back to yeah. phone humor. <laughs> <laughs> I think when you so. guys left somebody else had their thong story and <laughs> uh, that's um that's fucking classic. I love that. I was I was getting <laughs> tears because I was just picturing her. Unfortunately, I was picturing everything. Yeah. Yeah. The hair sticking out between the candy, that would be pretty fucking fun <laughs> to see though. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably where I would have lost it right there. As soon as I saw that, I'd be like, no, I'm, don't eat the candy. <laughs> it's I'd be hairy, advocating don't for no candy eating. That, I'd be on Haney's side for sure. Haney would be bent in the back. Like, no, no. Do but I, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I feel bad with that person that, you know, happens to be one of our super fans. And now you just, well, I guess you didn't out them about it. But yeah, no, I would never. Right in the face. Now they're yeah. driving their car off the side of the road. <laughs> He told that fucking story. <laughs> Let it die, man. I can't even go to the reunion. Yeah. 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 Hey, Jay, uh, why don't you start it off with a quick, like, A school instructor bio? Like, how long, how long have you been? What was your job in the Navy, et cetera? All that stuff. Yeah. So uh, I, I joined boot camp back in the, uh, back in the old barracks, you know, the, not this new barracks with all the, uh, Everything's all in one building. I, I was in ship two USS Taylor. It was like <laughs> it was like the second ship from the front of RTC. So I thought it was um, the Island because that was I was in ship two. Oh, were you ship two? Maybe yeah. I had the ship number wrong, but well, just, just the quickest boot camp. Just the quickest bio. Just the quickest bio. Oh, and we'll get oh so, okay. yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, sorry, we need sorry. To, this, <laughs> these are the details that everyone needs to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. I'll get in on that. Uh, I'll get the details. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah. So, uh, I I uh, went through a school in Great Lakes, all that stuff. Um, I was a sea list deck. Um, went through sea school there and. In uh, Dam Neck, Virginia. Yeah. Um, was on two ships. Um, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of lost now because. No, you're that, fine. That uh, how many years? Threw me off the format. How many oh, years? Um, 11 years and, and like six months, something like that. Nice. Uh, Joe, why don't, you, uh, why don't you kick it off then? All right. Um, is somebody doing some sort of dog fighting? The, no, like, I've got somewhere? a I've got a puppy that she uh, she just got spayed, so she's having a little issue. Oh, okay, okay. As long as it's not it's not dog fighting going on, we don't <laughs> have to pay for that on this show. But yeah, uh, yeah. All right, dude. Um, how long did you say you were in again? I'm sorry. Eleven years. Eleven years. Eleven six years. Months, something like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Um, you said earlier. Uh, so about Texas. Are you, are you originally from Texas? I'm originally from Texas. Yep. Nice. Dallas, Texas. What part of Texas? Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. Josh, what do you think? He might be a Yankee being that far north. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I live closer to Houston. I live closer to Houston. Okay. 
Okay. Just down on 45. Just right down 45. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to give away your... We don't want anybody coming to your house. You don't have to I'm give away no stalkers, <laughs> you know. I already got enough already, so I don't need any more. Shocker I had boys. some kids... I'm sorry. I'm gonna say, I had some kids. Yeah, yeah. Back up. Back up. Uh, all right. So is that where you is that where you joined from? Like after high school? Like, I did. I, um, I was 22 when I joined. So oh, man. I had kind of ex- yeah, I kind of experienced life a little bit. Right. Um, I actually was had, had planned on joining the Navy right out of high school as a mm-hmm. nuclear machinist mate on submarines, and mm-hmm. I met a girl, and that kind of changed my plans. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't make my plan actually go through until I was twenty two. Um, yeah, it, life just kind of changed, and she was out of the picture. So, oh, yeah, cool, cool, cool. right, right, uh, and. Uh, do you think you would have rather been that nuclear guy at the end of the, at the, no. end of the day? Good choice. Absolutely Good choice. not. No, Good absolutely choice. not. Oh, weird. Good choice. No, I'm, I'm six foot five, so I don't think I would have liked it on subs too much. Oh, Oof. shit, dude. Uh, so, 22 years old, man. Uh, so, I'm assuming that at 22 years old, you got into boot camp and you were taking it way too serious. <laughs> No, actually, my recruiter did a pretty good job of kind of like, hey, you know, I forget. He had a nickname for people like me because I just kind of walked in off the street and was like, hey, man, I want to join the Navy. Uh, I didn't do I didn't do uh, delayed entry or anything like that. I literally went in, took the ASVAB um, and I want to say it was like three weeks. I was gone. Damn. Yeah, you're probably like a recruiter, so your fears are in order. recruiter's sure dream. Go. Yeah, that, yeah, I, I, I kind of messed around, and I was working a job. I mean, it wasn't a bad job, but I was working a job that I just wasn't happy with. And what job was it? My, so you know the big buildings in like a downtown area, and you okay. see the plants and stuff that are in the de- the like lobbies and stuff like that. Oh. I was the guy that would go in and change those plants out and like water them and stuff like that. Oh, cool. That's cool. That's kind of a cool job, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was okay because you kind of worked at your own pace. You had your own delivery truck. You took all the plants, you know, all over, pretty much all over the Dallas area. I mean, I had a pretty big network of, of stuff where I had to go, but <clears throat> it was, it was my dad that kind of snapped me out of it. Um, I was rolling in from the bar at 4 a.m. And he was rolling out to work and he was like, don't you have to be at work in like an hour and a half? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to take a shower and then I'll be on my way. He's <laughs> like, this is not okay, man. You need to, you need to wake up. You need to do something with yourself because this is not okay. And so, yeah, that was that early morning conversation where I was like, you know what? Maybe he's right. Maybe I got to do something different with my life than this. And yeah. So you said what? Let the journey begin. Is that what it was <laughs> when you were joining? I'm, I don't want to say it was something. <laughs> I still have that this? T-shirt. This was uh, 2002. I think it was still 2002. Let the journey you, began. So you joined. Probably. You joined in 2002. Uh, what Correct. month did you go to boot camp? May 7th, mm, 2002. Summer. I actually turned 23 in boot camp. Nice, nice. They have awesome birthday parties in boot camp, don't they? I didn't tell anybody. I didn't want anybody just, to know. Well, I was just letting everybody else know that wants to join the Navy. They have really awesome <laughs> birthday parties in boot camp. If you no, just happen to I, have your bo- birthday party birthday in boot camp. I didn't tell anybody. Hey, I didn't tell, right. I didn't want anybody to know that. I'm not gonna lie, your your uh, ability to join the Navy so fast and yeah. so suddenly has off this little guideline here of like, you know, how we talk to you folks during these interviews, uh, you've knocked off like 13 things. <laughs> Jay, when uh, do you start thinking about the military? Five years before I joined. <laughs> <laughs> did you continue with the ranges? Nope. <laughs> Jay, what Jay, did, you uh, <laughs> Not a guy that did, <laughs> uh, did 9-11 factor into you joining at it all? It did. It did a lot. Um, I, I actually had stopped by the Marine Corps um, recruiting office and they were right next door to the Navy and nobody was in the Marine Corps office. And I was like, I know if I don't do this now, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to, you know, I was dating someone at the time and I was just like, you know what? 
I don't want anybody to change my mind this time. This just isn't this lifestyle is just not working out. And I'm, I'm just, I'm not going anywhere. I'm 22. I didn't have a plan. College wasn't for me. Um, I enjoyed drinking. I enjoyed going out and partying. I mean, it was fun. I mean, but I just knew I wasn't going to do anything. I wasn't going to go anywhere. I was just going to stay on that path. So that's why she went to college, man. You could <laughs> learn something and drink and party. Yeah. <laughs> and get yeah. huge amounts of debt and stay there for like right. six years to get a bachelor's. Yes. Yeah. I, I would end up being in Van Wilder or something, man. Cause like <laughs> I was so wild, even, I mean, to a certain point, I was still wild in the Navy. I mean, I, I was always the class clown. I was always making people laugh. I was always a jokester, pulling pranks, you know, pushing the limit to the point where I never really got in trouble with the law, but I was always pushing that thin line, always on that thin line. And, uh, I mean, driving a delivery truck, I've been out drinking all night long. <laughs> I mean, all night long. And I mean, you it's just, just a really transporting bad... plants. Thank God. You weren't transporting Correct. human beings. Uh, exactly. Correct. So, so your pop, yeah. your your pop told you to wake up, and you woke up. What was his reaction to to this? Um, no, nah, he was fine with it. Um, both my parents were really tough on me because I was the oldest. Um, so no, they were both okay with it completely. Um, because I was just on a path of pissing them off constantly. Like, uh, I randomly went and got my ears pierced, you know, and it was, you know, tattoos and stuff. And, you know, my parents weren't like, that's just not the way that they, they were raised. And and so I was kind of breaking the mold and really starting to aggravate them. So they were like, you need to go do something else. So did not, it, it, they go ahead. Did you have a grill? <laughs> no, you didn't make no, yourself didn't a grill. grill. <laughs> no, but I had frosted tips like drew. Um, <laughs> You had and, to, uh, bro. It wasn't your choice. Man, it was it was that it was You're that conforming. whole uh I forget the the band. I think his name was Mark McGrath, but like everybody oh, was so Ray. into that look. Sugar Ray? Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray. that's you it. Forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, um, Ray, Jay. So did you have any uh I guess like the Navy, like like you said you wanted to be a nuke or whatever and, you know, timeline didn't work out, but, uh, why the Navy in general, like, was there like family members or was it just like a, you know what? I would rather do, I'm a man of the sea. I can feel it. <laughs> no, I didn't actually find out. I had a family member in the Navy until after I joined, uh, I found out like, I don't know, maybe a couple of months after graduation boot camp that my great grandfather was in world war two. He was a welder in Spokane, Washington, and he did his four year bid. Um, and he, he got out after the four years, but, uh, I didn't even know he was in the Navy just because, um, drinking runs in the family and he had a really bad drinking problem. And not a lot of people spoke about him just because of the negative connotation he, you know, he put on the family. So, <clears throat> never really spoke about him too much, but afterwards have a picture of him. And, you know, like that was one thing that I took a lot of pride in was my uniform. Even, even though I wasn't like the best, you know, knock down drag out sailor, like, um, I really always did take a very, very, you know, high pride in my uniform and looking back at his picture, like his Dixie cups on the back of his head, you know, his neckerchiefs all jacked up, his <laughs> sleeves were rolled up in his dress blues. I mean, he just, he didn't look like somebody that really took the time to like go down to the the uniform shop and buy five neckerchiefs just to make sure you got it right. You know, <laughs> he just took whatever he probably balled it up. And just well, he, said he was it. a welder. So maybe, you know, the, maybe <clears throat> the job has something to do with it too. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe uh, he was, he had passed long before I was ever even born. <clears> so. I never even knew him. <clears throat> I bet you've got some cool ass pictures of looking just like a, a hardcore sailor beat up. Oh man. Yeah. He was always yeah. dirty from welding. Yeah. yeah so get a couple of those hanging up in the house, man. People, you know, I don't know. I always like those like old, old world war two pictures where you see those guys all kind of, you know, where it looks like they're actually where they're working or something. And then you see pictures of us and we're wearing candy necklaces on our penises. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. No, I mean, if you look at that generation, um, just <laughs> Google, you know, school pictures of like high school age boys back then. I think Joe Rogan talked about this. Like they were all fit. There was no overweight people oh, back yeah. in that day. And I mean, they, they just, I mean, they, they were tougher. I mean, this, you know, kinder, gentler Navy that I hear about. I mean, and I saw a little bit of it when I was at RTC, my final command. Oh man, it's a completely different Navy from when, I mean, I had, you know, RTCs that were, I can't even explain how tough they were on us in boot camp. I mean, we had a GMC that he would gut, uh, skull skull straight i mean just never spit and just you know to be yelling and you can smell it god just disgusting and i mean just just a tough son of a gun you know no I, like i think i've said it before in this podcast like i wonder if they're playing a character if they're really like that you know what i'm saying do you tell me that daniel day lewis can't swallow his own tobacco spit and still like come off as a i mean you know you think these RDCs live that life for real? I do. <laughs> I really do. Like you do. I oh. see. I think. I think that when you when you, I'm. Tr- I don't want to. I don't. I mean, I try to buy. It's like a major life. pain type situation. Yeah, exactly. Always, like, I don't. You know what I mean? I, I think they like. You know, as soon as they get out of the car, they like step on like you know, U.S. Navy asphalt in the parking lot, and they're like, "All right, here we go." No, because I'm going to be major I, pain. That no, I get what you're. I get what you're going with, Joe. But no, I met that GMC. So after a school, we got stuck. Several of us got stuck in Great Lakes, and we ended up getting an NEC out of it, ninety five forty five, which is base police, because our C school was so um, so backlogged that we ended up doing base police. And I met him. Um, after boot camp, like he was coming in gate five, that way off gate, you know, all the jam vans would go out there. And oh, yeah, park. Yeah. So he came, he was walking in where he had parked his car and just drunk as a skunk. And I, I don't want to say his name, but I was like, Hey chief, what's going on? Do you remember me? And he's like, Oh, I remember you Duggar. Yeah. 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 How are you doing? And I could smell the, the beer on his breath. And I was like, <laughs> um, you really are a hard nose son of a bitch you know like come, yeah come on in uh, you know i don't I, I didn't want to get yelled at so i was like yeah come on in the gate you know, go wherever you're gonna go um and i guess he was staying in that uh, staff barracks on ntc so yeah i mean i still to this day like i envision the salty true salty sailor as like that gmc guy like man he was he was always the one that was yelling and stuff in, boot, in, in our boot camp, you know, that yeah, was, he was the toughest one for sure. So as a 22 uh, year old, uh, functioning alcoholic, <laughs> how hard was boot camp? Like, did you do anything? I mean, besides lifting plants from the van to the, to the uh, inside of the hotel or whatever, but I mean, there's some, you know, you got to do a little bit of running. You gotta, I mean, are you, are you, by 22 years old, are you, you're obviously out of 18 year old shape, but are you still spry enough to get by? No, I was still pretty fit. I mean, I was an athlete in school, so I was still, I wouldn't say like washboard abs or anything like that, but I I was still, I was still able to hang. I, I think I wrote down somewhere, I was looking through my, my cruise book from boot camp, and I wrote down that I ran a 10, 15 mile and a half. So I was still pretty quick, still pretty agile. Um, the hardest part for me in boot camp was not laughing. I mean, I constantly was laughing at something and getting in trouble. So <clears throat> there was a guy in our boot camp division that was across from me when we were doing PT, and he couldn't do a, a, a jumping jack. And every time he'd start doing jumping jack, I would just bust up laughing, and I just couldn't contain myself. So I, you know, I'd always get beat extra because I couldn't stop laughing. I couldn't stop making jokes. What about um, what do you mean he couldn't do it? Like he couldn't move his arms and his legs he, at the same time, or yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah he was just like all coordinated. He like was just <laughs> yeah, all over the. I mean, he that just. I would love to have seen though. that. That would have been hilarious. I think <laughs> that is yeah. yeah. I don't know how you kept a straight. Yeah. <laughs> I might have laughed too. How do the RDCs didn't laugh? I don't know, but 
I think that I, I think that they kept it in really well. Um, I think that they had their moments where they probably were able to turn away from us and laugh, but like, yeah, it was there was a lot of really funny moments in boot camp where I mean, I just couldn't hold it in. I, it, I was and to like be old. The, go ahead. I always liked the like when you could get the like the RDC to crack. You know, just like that. That yeah. I, we had one d- that one dude that was like, you know, a dumbass guy in there. And they were like, and he said, assume the position is which position, and without missing a beat, someone yelled doggy style, and I don't even know why they would yell it out in boot camp, no. but I fucking, <laughs> I fucking lost it, and that RDC <laughs> lost his shit, and I was like, oh, because somebody was about to get torn the fuck up, but I mean, like there was like f- you know fifty people in there that were just like. Bleh. Yeah, <laughs> man. You know, like, there were so many. Just, just the the one time you get the other artist to crack, where you know they have to break character for a second. Yeah, there were so many funny moments in boot camp that, like, I mean, we could probably sit here for hours and and tell our own little stories, but oh yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah it, was, um, it was hilarious. To keep us moving here, we're about out of boot camp, uh, so we'll just leave it there. Um, not bad food, though. I will say that about boot camp. I'm sure you'll agree with me. <laughs> I don't really remember the the food that much. I just remember having to use hand signals for like salt and pepper and ketchup and mustard, and it was just like we're we're, we're human beings. Why can't we? You know, like I have to do this for ketchup and I have to do this for mustard. Like, really, I can't just say pass me the mustard. Um, but we don't want, we don't need the, the RDCs are here nonsense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> um, and I mean that's something I think you guys hit on a couple of times, like in that old boot camp where you had to run everywhere or march everywhere. Like they give you like ten minutes to eat, so like you didn't really. I don't really remember. And the only meal I remember was after battle stations. That's the only meal I remember. Yeah. from boot camp yeah, that's I it i agree i agree yeah for sure <laughs> nachos and man oh my god it was like a, it was well like, i take that back willy wonka that, food yeah i take that back there was one thing that we used to do and i don't know if anybody else did this but it just seemed like you were you were always exhausted you were always working on like three hours of sleep um so we used to take the from the drinking fountain coffee and all the different drinks and mix them all together and then put the hot cocoa in it and that would give us like uh, an energy drink you know (laughs) kind of you know just jolt of energy um yeah i remember that that we called that the the ricky rocket yeah that's (laughs) it called that all the coffee drinks it was coffee suicide um chocolate milk and like yeah yeah like coffee chocolate milk cocoa and then like they it had like, like Coca Cola too, or something. Uh, we didn't. I don't remember if we had yeah, maybe like soda. Yeah, I don't remember if we had soda, but we did have like a strawberry drink and an orange drink. But it wasn't like it was like more like Kool Aid. So a bug juice, they it, called it. Bug yeah, juice. Yeah, something like that. Bug yeah, juice. stupid, <laughs> stupid bug juice. Yeah. <laughs> and boot camp's the worst about those fucking nicknames. By the way, that's your Ricky Notepad. That's yeah. your Ricky vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Cut the shit, dickhead. <laughs> it's a sock on my hand, and it's getting the dust up on the yeah. floor. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I, okay, it's cute and funny, but I mean, it's just, it's, even then, I was like, this is corny as hell. Um, you know, I, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we had the Ricky Fishbowl. Did you guys have the Ricky Fishbowl? <laughs> what was that? So when somebody would get in trouble, they would have to, like, make like they were a fish. <laughs> And like swim around in front of the RDC's window, like they were inside <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> a fish that tank. That's pretty funny. So like, no, that is kind of that is funny. That's <laughs> really demeaning. So yeah, I'm I'm totally into that. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah we had a we had a couple repeat offenders that always had to do that in, in my division. We yeah, um, we kick over into. NTC Great Lakes and beyond. Um, oh I mean, man, yeah, know, this so is you, one of. <clears throat> so you were hardcore tech core then. Yeah, oh, yeah. you would have been NIDA. Oh Nida. yeah, baby NIDA. Yeah. Nida. Um, 
computer aided training and everything else. I mean, that was a a slog of, of sorts, you know, regardless whether you were ahead of schedule, behind schedule, or anything else in between. But it was, you know, plugging and chugging. Um yeah. Did you have Conrad at A in A I did. I did, did have Conrad in A school. Um I had a funny Conrad story that uh, so I was man, it it happened fast. So yeah. in A school I ended up getting married and so we were moving into base housing and somebody had swiped one of the um wedding gift checks like uh, somebody wrote us a check. Yeah. And <clears throat> my neighbor up above took that check, ink washed it and rewrote it for a larger amount. So we, the, the person that sent us the check was like, Hey, have you gotten the check? Have you gotten the check? Well, I'll make a long story short. Um, it, we found out that it was a guy that was in ETA school living above me that had ink washed it. Mm -hmm. So Conrad was my, um, what do you call it? Class it's counselor, whatever the leader, name. class counselor, yeah. class leader, whatever. Yeah. And so like, I will never forget the the tongue lashing he gave that guy. Like, you're going to steal from your own people. Like, what do you think? Like, it was, I was uncomfortable and I wasn't even getting yelled at. So that was my introduction to Conrad. So yeah, great. I mean, and so because I got stuck on base, I even saw him a couple more times and dealt with him a couple more times as a, as a police officer, base police officer. So yeah, I, I like Conrad. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I liked him once he got to the ship. But even though the first day I saw him with <clears throat> Donald Cook, I picked a fight with him. But that's a different story. <laughs> oh yeah, because I thought he well, was he was in A school, you know, because he was all yeah, he was kind of a smart guy. Blah, blah 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 blah. I'm like, all right, buddy, yeah. <laughs> let's pick a fan room. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, God, fan room counseling. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah. Um, so did you? Were you? seated high enough that you picked between etfc or were you on the dice roll of uh eeny meenies for me it didn't really matter because we yeah. only had sea whiz orders so it didn't really matter it was just east coast yeah. or west coast that was it oh, yeah. okay. okay and i didn't even i didn't even know i was going to be an fc like after mm -hmm. tech Corps, they took us over to the a school and was like okay everybody and it was a huge class because it was like christmas time yeah. When everybody and they were like, "Hey, when they, when you come back, there's a line down the middle of this room. Everybody on this side, you're ET, and everybody on that <laughs> side, you're FC." So I was like, "Holy shit!" Well, yeah. I guess I'm an FC, you know. Yeah. And so and then I kind of started talking to some of the guys that were in the barracks uh, about, you know, what's you know what's the difference. And so the only thing that they could, t you know, I remember them saying was, "Well, FCs." If you break it, you fix it. ETs, everybody else breaks your shit. So I was like, well, I don't want to do that. So mm -hmm. thank God I'm an FC. Yeah. Yeah, plus it was like, you thought he wanted to be an ET, but then everybody you knew that was in ETA school was on like Mando and like, yeah, you know, getting yeah. tutoring or whatever else, you know. Program. Every ET that I knew was miserable. They hated yeah. a school. So I was like, oh, I'm glad I'm an FC. Shit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so went Sea Wiz, which is down here in Damn Neck. Um, you, so where was? It, how did you get to pick in your first ship? Like, I mean, you said it was kind of East, East Coast, West Coast kind of thing, but like, did, what was on your dream sheet? Where were you? What were you, what were your goals as far as like I want to try and get a ship here and like this is what platform I want to be on? Did you have or you're just like, I don't care. Uh, you know, I do remember filling out the dream sheet, but uh, you know, I had a, I had a fleet returning in my C school, C school class. So he kind of told me, put the opposite of what you want on your dream sheet and you're going to get it. And so <clears throat> I didn't even put Norfolk on there. Yeah. I put, um, like Mayport. Um, and then I put, uh, I think I put Hawaii on there and I put something else. I don't remember, but uh, it didn't happen. It was awful. And then <clears throat> we were a really tight knit group. There was only six of us in my C school class. Oh, wow. So, wow. yeah, uh, I, I remember a couple of guys were like, oh, my dad was on this ship or whatever. There was always some excuse. And I was like, I don't really care. You know, whatever. 
So <clears throat> my first ship was the USS Shreveport and they were, uh, they were already on deployment. They had just left like right when I graduated, which yeah. was in April. So I had a newborn son that was like a year old, maybe at, at the most. And so I was like, well, I'm guess I'm getting deployed. And I mean, it was no time. I had gone to TPU and then I was there at TPU for a little bit, maybe a month. And, and then I flew out to the ship. Yeah. Yeah. There, I you mean, mean, the ship in Rota or where, uh, where'd you hook up? Bahrain. Oh, ba- Bahrain. oh, wow. All the way out. Yeah. Bahrain. Bahrain. Yeah. Wow. We had to take a couple of flights. And I guess we missed them in France, so then they send us from France to Bahrain, and that's where we met them. Um, was that a cool experience? I didn't get to experience meeting the ship. I know Joe flew back from the ship, but I met the ship. In, I met the ship in Norfolk when I when I boarded the ship. Was that a cool experience, or was that not really that cool of experience? Nerve, nerve, it's got to be nerve wracking. <laughs> I yeah, to me, so to me, it wasn't very cool because. <laughs> You're taking your everything you need in a sea bag. <laughs> Literally, yes. Right? So, no, it wasn't fun for me. Like, I at least um, drove down in my vehicle to Norfolk from Dahlgren, Virginia. Right, right. And no, it was, it was, it was nerve-wracking because, number one, you're in a foreign country for the first time, or well, for the first time in my life. Um, and then you're staying at some hotel out in the middle of, you know, Bahrain where, you, I mean they're constantly trying to scare the crap out of you. Don't go out in town. Don't do this. You know, and I was, I, that, I was always the biggest guy in the group, no matter where I went. So like, I just, I mean, they were bussing us back and forth from the hotel to the base. Oh, your ship's not here. They're going to be here in a couple days or, you know, whatever. They just kept leading us along. And finally the ship got there. I wanted to get out of the hotel. So once we got to the ship, we've actually, they weren't pulling in for some reason. We flew via a uh, helicopter from the base to the wasp and then from the wasp to the Shreveport. So, um, it wasn't, uh, that wasn't bad, but, uh, yeah, just trying to carry everything you needed for a deployment in a sea bag. It, it, I would yeah. rather be, I would rather go to the ship in port and be able to take everything that I needed for that deployment and, and do it that way versus trying to fly and meet a ship somewhere. That's not fun. Yeah. Especially being your first deployment, first ship, you don't know anything, you know. Yeah. No, that's Joe, that did not you, fun. You didn't leave. I mean, did you feel like you had to leave some stuff behind because you couldn't take it with you on the plane or whatever? I just didn't feel like I was prepared as well. Um, I didn't know I would need as many pairs of coveralls. <laughs> I didn't realize I would be painting right. as much as I mean, and I still, I was still green. I still had those stupid cotton you know, working whites. I didn't even have CNTs yet. I, I just, yeah. I was still so boot. I didn't right. know anything, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, when I flew out to the ship, like, you know, try to pack as light as a can. And it's like, I had two sea bags and a garment bag and that, you know, and that was still like, you know, barely, that was just the uniform items, two pairs of civilian clothes. Like that was it. Yeah. Man. It was minimums. I was still so boot. I remember still having like the, the stencil on a lot of my stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I left yeah. The Navy with stencils on my stuff. <laughs> I have stuff right now. I can drag out from the, from yeah, the box. I still have the stuff. Basement. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh yeah. That's still oh, yeah. my stencil on it. I've got other people's stencils on their pea coats. They left behind. <laughs> yeah. How many pea coats do you have, stencils. Joe? I think I've got like three pea coats. Damn. Dang. Nice. No, one, one. I wonder if one of them was mine. I don't. I don't believe so. This is from your division. No, they were just ones that were left down in birthing. Oh, <laughs> because nice. I got a pea. If you're gonna if you're gonna take something that somebody leaves behind, that's worth taking. Yeah. I mean, that's like a fucking. I mean, that, <laughs> it's a three hundred dollar coat. So I, I know, know you, what they I know, are on the, on the black market these days. I know you flew out. Did you have to limit your selection? You, know, you had to fly when you when you left the boat, Joe. Uh, when I left the boat, um, I, I there, there was stuff that I had. I mean, I had to leave behind. 
um, yeah. that, you may have, stuff, that you may have, you know, like, that you may have took and when you were if they were in port or what something. If like I was that. in port, I would I would have cleaned out my rack completely. You know, there was like I mean I left like some like DVDs behind and shit. You know, just some random stuff to like I think I left them to Baker. Uh, uh, my stuff. Like that, and in know. fact, I gave Baker my rack. I had I had that sweet little rack by the time that I got out. It was Drew's rack at one point. And uh, so, I mean, there, there was, but I also took a bunch of shit with me. I had, I, dude, I brought all my stuff. I had, I had like, I think I took two sea bags with me out of there. Yeah. I had all sorts of random shit that I just, you know, accumulated, you know, clothes wise or, you know, uniform wise. And when you're pack, packing it all up, you're like, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need this. I should have left all that shit. Your gas mask. Stuff like that. Well, yeah, and I said, you know, I had to take that Marlin spike. Yeah, Yeah. I knew I was getting off the ship on that last appointment. I shouldn't have went on that I went on, Mm -hmm. and like even still, yeah, you have stuff like, well, I don't need this, and just pass it off to the, you know, say that. But I mean, I I mean, being like, if 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 I had to go meet the ship somewhere, and I didn't know my asshole from my elbow about ship life, and I was like, well, I've got my sea bag on, I'm ready for school, pops. (laughs) You know, like, yeah, and, and you got like, oh, good. I, I'm glad I brought two sets of dress whites and two sets of, you know, and and uh, good thing I brought my two pairs of civilian clothes so I can wear the same two t shirts the entire time out here. Yeah. yeah. Like, a no, like I showed up for deployment with two pairs of coveralls. Two pairs oh of coveralls. God. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's probably yeah. what we were issued. Yeah. 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 That's and they're issue. really crispy and like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh man, I finally get to wear these dark, these are dark awesome. blue. Shit, yeah, I, I mean, only have two pairs and we wear them every day. <laughs> Fuck. And then being on a 40 year old ship, I mean, you're constantly painting, you're painting just to cover holes. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so once for dust, twice for rust, and three times exactly. for missing metal. <laughs> <laughs> it's this rule. I still yeah. use that rule to this day. Um, <clears throat> since you had a fleet returnee in your some of your schooling, did you like were you hitting him up a lot for what to expect, or did he impart a lot of wisdom? Did it seem to pay off, or do you feel like you had no idea what to ask? Mm-hmm. So like he just kind of gave you guys the uh, the sugar coated. No, he came over and like he would hang out. I would. You know, I'm from Texas, so I would barbecue like all the time and and you know it's one of those things like it's i say like if, if you invite me over to your house like you bring beer right yeah. yeah and you just leave it right so he would bring meat he would bring beer and we would just grill and not ask him all kinds of questions so he did kind of sit, set me up as far as like what to expect but i wish he had done a little bit more as to prepared me what to take flying out to a ship you know like that's the one thing i wished i would just would have known Cause like I took all of my dress uniforms. I took like all that crap that I didn't need, you know, like, yeah, I, I yeah. should have been a little bit better prepared for that, especially because we got extended twice on my first deployment. Oh, wow. So if it took some yeah. good toilet paper would be one thing you should have took. <laughs> nah, nah, it doesn't, <laughs> that's not something I would have mentioned, but like, that's priority um, on my list, man. That's a high priority. And this was back before email was real popular. So, like, we were still yeah, getting right. snail mail. So, like, I remember mail just not getting there for a long time. And then finally, when we did get mail, I got, like, three packages. So, right. I finally got all the soap and stuff that I needed. To, oh, but it was, like, three months too late, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, you know, you think that like when they when you're in C school and they give you the name of like here's your ship sponsor and you email them, they're going to email you right back like and be really cool about it or whatever. But but the, your, it turns out your sponsor is some fucking dickhead on the ship that's not even like taking sponsor. this job serious. Well, yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know I what agree I'm saying? I mean, I mean, yeah. you you got out as an FC one, so I'm sure you've been a ship sponsor to somebody. You did a shitty job. My first ship, I would say, I don't remember who my ship's sponsor was, but Masha Vecchio was my ship sponsor on the Donald Cook. Oh, he's going to. So, yeah, he hooked me up. He kind of told me, hey, this is, he can't. He's like, a real weirdo, me. too. Well, no, he called me and was like, hey, I can't send you all the information in email. 
just call me. And so I called him and we spoke and he was like, Hey, we're going to be on deployment by the time you get here, you know? And, and that was a whole jacked up scenario too, because I decon my first ship. They made me extend another 13 months on top of whatever time I had left because I didn't do my whole C rotation. Mm -hmm. So then I had to extend to finish out my C rotation, which didn't make sense to me. So to go to Donald cook for two years, but, uh, being, being on another ship, he was just like, yeah, you know what you need to bring. Just letting you know, you know, we're going to be gone by the time you finish, uh, your TPU time or whatever it is that, you know, cause when I found out I had orders, the, the cook had just left for deployment. So you show up on that deployment that went to Ukraine and Bulgaria and shit like, yes. Oh, that's the one I left on. Yeah, he yep. basically just missed us. Oh, I left like I, a month into that. So you must have taken the place of like passing like each other in, in the Don air. Magni? I'll tell you exactly when I got there. You guys were in Con France when I hit the Donald Cook. I was not on board for that. Yep. Jay, so you get to the Shreveport. Well, what kind of ship was the Shreveport? LPD 12, amphibious transport dock. Damn. Oof. All right. So what was the uh, freighter? No, it was a gator. It was a gator. Yeah, it was I an Austin to, class, Austin class amphibious transport dog. So I'm pointing out to the audience. You know, we're we're very pro heavy FCs, and for the most part, we're only on destroyers and cruisers. So being on a different platform is kind of unique experience. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was very unique because it was so much more slower paced than a Donald Cook. Like Donald Cook was like going to I don't know, like uh, uh, a Corvette or something, and and you were just coming from an El Camino. I mean, it's just two different, two different worlds. I mean, but it was great. It was a really tight knit crew, just like Donald Cook. Um, I, I enjoyed my time on the Shreveport. Um, some very special things happened while I was on you, the Shreveport. How many people are on on a, on that? Like crew wise, I guess. Right. How many? So numbers? if. If you were at maximum manning, I would say like maybe 350 total Navy. Really? But with the with the Marine element, you were pushing like another thousand Marines. Damn. And all they do is fucking eat, work <clears throat> out, get in everybody's yeah. fucking way and just be monster dick. Would y'all just stick them in heard. like sardines, like just make them sleep standing up or what? <laughs> no, they had their own birthing. We had special birthings for all the Marines. So uh, even when they weren't on board, we owned those spaces. So we would have to go and clean them and keep them clean while the Marines weren't on board. Wow, that sucks. How many uh, SEWAS mounts are on the? Did you guys have just two or three? Two, two, yep. Uh, they were kind of like in odd positions. So like front, like, left side of the ship and back right side of the ship. So, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They weren't like uh, on the cook where they were pretty much four and a half. Yeah, and it, it, it we decommed it, and then it's actually it was in mothball for a long time, and they just literally uh, melted it down maybe like a year or two ago. Oh wow, interesting. Did you take anything off that ship when you when you left? A couple of things. I was a plank owner, so when you decommission a ship, you're a plank owner too. Mm -hmm. So I have the plank somewhere around here in all my memorabilia. That's cool. And they, what they did was in the well deck, it's wood, right? So they took some of the wood from the well deck and actually made those planks from the wood out of the ship. Awesome. So that was pretty, I mean, you're on a ship for that long. I mean, it was, I was on that ship for four and a half years, almost close to five years before um, we decommed it. And that's crazy because I had to extend 13 months because I was like five or six months short of my first sea rotation. They wouldn't let me just go to shore duty. I had to extend for 13 more months. Yeah. But isn't a decommission a fun thing or not necessarily? Oh no, it was great. Yeah. I mean, on the, on our twilight cruise, which was seven months long, as we're coming back across the Atlantic, we're tossing stuff that we know we're not going to use. Like all the chairs that were in combat, those like shitty chairs that you're sitting in in combat, we literally took all of them out and threw them over the side because we didn't want to have to, awesome, we didn't want to have to carry dude, anything awesome. off the ship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Just tell us. laughs> 
Yeah. What's so that funny is that I've seen so much stuff get thrown on the side <laughs> of that ship. Uh, like, yeah. Over the years, like things that I'm like, yeah. hey, is that me? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. in places that I didn't think that that thing, should, you know, like just like, man, fuck it, man. Boom. <laughs> and things I've seen get like flushed over the side or thrown over the side in Port Norfolk. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, this, I don't want to clean yeah. up this. I don't want to clean up this cigarette butt filled five yeah. inch shell. Funk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it disappeared. Oh, it. <laughs> it disappeared. Uh, all my problems have disappeared. <laughs> well, and that so, ship was yeah. falling apart too, because that ship was forty three years old Damn. when we decommissioned it. So, I mean, it was already falling <laughs> apart. So, I yeah. Mean, I mean, a I'm 42. Of, I feel still pretty good. I'm not. A, bu- a buddy of ours was on a, on on on, on a, a similar ship. I don't even remember what he was on, but uh, he was a bosun mate, and he got out when he was on the Donald Cook. But he was on a decom ship before that, and he told me he had a battle ensign from from the ship. Oh yeah, yeah, like the or the like the welcome like home flag. flag or something—the yeah. one that's you know like a monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, somebody uh, actually has in their garage our our ribbon for the ship, the ribbon rack for the ship. Oh, he has that in his garage. Oh yeah, like the this dude. This dude took the, and I always thought it was that was shit, man. I went to his house when I went to a. I went to I went to his wedding, and I went to and. Uh, I met him at his house like the day before his wedding and uh in his garage he was like let me show you something and it was like stapled from the freaking ceiling down you know like draping down covering yeah. the whole ceiling down the wall i mean it's just, you know a huge flag he was like yeah, yeah i took that off the uss whatever he was on i mean it, yeah and he yeah. was the bm guy was but yeah it, i it think was, the coolest the coolest thing that i got to take from the shreveport was i was the last person to re-enlist on the ship so the big golf check that they like have for you to like oh, take yeah, a picture yeah. with i have that golf check <laughs> That's i cool. have that big golf check yeah <laughs> a happy gilmore golf check <laughs> golf check yeah. it's a good souvenir yeah, yeah. I, I, is that not hanging on your walls right now like, it is a wall. It's, it, it's it's a it's in thing. my garage yeah uh, yeah, see a picture <laughs> that's awesome man well it's they just great. like you have this you can have this go ahead well we had an NCC that our NC one, he, I don't remember exactly what happened, but he was pushed off the ship like middle of our last deployment. So we had an NCC fly out with like three months left on deployment. And he was kind of coordinating who's going to go where. So like there were people when we got back from that twilight cruise that like immediately um, upon us pulling in, they were done. They were gone from the ship. They were not coming back. And then we had the people that were going to kind of stay around and kind of tear things down, get the stuff off. Of course, Seawist Dex, we had to stick around because our whole our whole weapon system was coming off the ship. So uh, yeah, we stuck around. I, I was the I was the last officer officer of the deck standing watch on that ship when we decommissioned it. I have the uh, logbook somewhere. That's kind of well, cool. that's cool. You just yeah. steal that shit off the deck. Well, when Get it with you. When they were like, "Hey, you know, we're you're you're relieved," I I mean, I walked off the pier and I just kind of like stuck it in the back of my uh, under my dress white top in my pants and just kind of. So hit literally, it. there was nobody there. To, they were just like, "You're." That's got to be a weird experience because there's always somebody manning a navy ship, and then you're the last one to leave and not being relieved no, by somebody else. So right, they had a couple of bosun's mates that were still there. They kind of came and took like the mat. Um, off the quarter deck, they came and took the flags. They kind of they they left the podium, which I wish somebody would have grabbed that because it had a big like ship's crest on the front of the yeah. podium. Um, I don't know if anybody ever did go back and get it, but uh, that might just go yeah. with the ship. You know what I mean? Like that might be just part of the whole. You just sink it. Yeah, I guess the ship's I podium. Know. I've heard is is almost as important as the ship's bell. Yeah, I know the bell did. True. The bell did not stay with the ship. The bell got taken off for sure i remember that oh yeah yeah oh, yeah the bosun's mate came and grabbed that yeah because i had to there was some weird ceremony i had to ring bells and say something to the effect of you know this is the last time the shreveport bell will be rung shreveport uh 
decommissioning ceremony uh, complete or something like that. And then everything just got it, like, just taken off the ship. Crazy. Uh, Josh is a good bell ringer. <laughs> am I? Am I? No. Am I? Or no? That's sarcastic. <laughs> is that a sarcastic statement there, Very from sarcastic. Adam? You're a terrible bell ringer. <laughs> yeah, anything that requires any like kind of timing or, you know, I, I can only imagine a rhythmic you thing. On the one MC, a... like Petty Arson the Watch One MC, Josh, you would be great at that. I would definitely be a lot better. Now, I got all the announcements at school. I'm like, all right, listen here, kids. <laughs> this is what we're going to do today. We're going to say the pledge. Now, y'all get up there and say the pledge. <laughs> so, Josh isn't, isn't good at that. Was a, that was when he was good at was what? being Penny Officer the Watch. You were more of a. Topside rover guy, anyway. Yeah, I like being topside rover, internal rover. Remember the internal rover? Remember, didn't they stop that after so long or something like that? The, the internal rover was awesome because you could swing by birthing and watch 15 yeah. minutes of a movie and then go check in and come back and see the yeah. exciting conclusion of Demolition <laughs> Man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Go do some spy maintenance on the the chiller down down below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, always, yeah, that was always, always really cool about Eternal Rover was it was like I can fucking go anywhere. <laughs> and then you would you know like, well, I'll swing down here and see what this is all about. You know, you could you could really you know walk around and see what was going on, and just hope that you remembered how to get back. Yeah. <laughs> but what a good way to learn the ship. Just walk around, open doors. So we were I'd, lost. We I would be a seas. good petty officer to watch now for sure. Totally. <laughs> we we were all FCs, so we know you know we're our rate was very heavy. Um, you, you know, underway, right? We had the most work to do underway. Um, you know, for all the future Sea Wiz techs out there, what was it like in port for a Sea Wiz tech? What did you guys do, and did you get off work? Well, at the time? <laughs> Um, no, we didn't get off work at nine o'clock. I don't think anybody would have ever let us leave the quarter deck at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, I think, One those, times, I think those times had came and passed by the time we got there. I think. I don't think I've ever met anybody that got off the ship that early unless they right. had like a special request shit or something like that. Um, what I do remember is both ships we would have to do PMs as soon as we pulled into port because we were never given time underway to do PMs. And it, it's funny because even in the civilian sector in my current role, it seems like you're always fighting to get time to do PMs. So, um, yeah, we would do PMs. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know. Uh, What's that? I don't remember what, PMs. What, what? What's a PM? Preventative maintenance. Oh, three M boards and everything. You, okay, dude. Sorry, dude. It's... Like I promise you that all of these guys are sailors, former sailors. Audience. Yeah, I promise you. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to think maybe maybe the cabal was like a uh, a GWS tech and had to like change a windshield washer windshield washer fluid or something. Oh, you know, dude. he wishes, man. I've he, seen the fruits of my labor. Secret is Joe never did maintenance, so <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Exactly. I was up there greasing those cables like a freaking champion, dude. How? Yeah, you know exactly how I was. Yeah, DCP owed the cavil. Yeah, I heard the stories <laughs> about you. <laughs> it used to be a. <laughs> you were be quite the position when I was when I was younger, man. Joe was essentially a birthing cleaner. That was his his rate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> His brain was birthing cleaner. EC3. Oh, man. The funniest story I've heard, the what funniest story I've heard on this podcast take this guy is the story about the guy that was on the cook that uh, the HTs were doing PMs or something and forgot to plug the one toilet and he just got coated in nastiness. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, no. That'd be yeah, that was on this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. Oh, uh, was it uh, a was it a story that uh, Humphrey told us? I forget who it was, but yeah, they were the HTs were doing PMs, 
and there was some plug that was supposed to go in the toilet and, and somebody was supposed to be manning the, the bathroom, the head, don't go in there. And he goes in and drops a deuce and it gets covered in feces because they're doing the PM. <laughs> and he goes straight to the shower. Mm. I don't care. There's no washing that off for a while, yeah, man. Yeah. You're, you're going to smell pretty bad for it's a while. Emotional, yeah. emotional damage that are going on. Emotional you know? stain. <laughs> emotional stain, yeah. <laughs> File for dis- uh, disability with that one, right? <laughs> man, uh, sitting on toilets. Yeah, yeah I wanted to file for, for disability just touching the shower curtain, let alone. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> hey, don't get me started on the fucking freaks that went barefoot into the showers. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's disgusting. no, there's not people like that exist. Oh, no. Yes, there were, too. In, in Birthing 3, there were people <laughs> that would go and take a shower with no shower shoes on their feet. Disgusting. Mm. Mm. Mm-mm. I use the same shower shoes that I got in boot camp almost all the way through my entire naval career. Yep. No, I got the thicker ones. They were like Nikes or something. I did. I, I they did, were like I, I do two remember, inches like, thick. Yeah. Because some people got like their own. Like I just had a good time wearing those regular shower shoes. They they did me well. And then when I left the ship, they went in the trash. Yeah. They weren't yeah, like gross everybody... or anything. Like, they were they were always hung up. I mean, they were hung up from like boot camp my entire. No. Dude, I still I wear I showers, uh, shoes in the shower now. <laughs> what are you talking house? about? You threw this away in the what? garbage? Your own sh- your own house? He wears socks in the showers. <laughs> he <weird>. wears socks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just tasting that. <laughs> <laughs> he wears some old-timey tube socks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, um... Uh... Donald Cook, man, that was a pretty solid. How long were you on there? How long were you on? Two, there? two years, two okay. years. Yep. Short stay. Damn. Just so like my then. my my full sea time by the time I was done with all sea time was six years, six and a half years. It's a fair amount, though. Yeah. That Donald Cook was a crazy time, wasn't it? Oh, I, I had a blast. Like that was a a very unique crew. I mean, it was constantly ball to the wall. I mean, we were always doing something, always getting in their way for something. But uh, yeah, it was a, a lot of fun. You to, I mean, that destroyer navy. Center. Or you, you had a you had a good division. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. you had a really yeah. solid division. There's a lot of good good guys in that at that point. Yeah. The, the only thing that sucked was like. You checked out after- board on a, like a high tempo time. Like my first couple of years on a Don Cook was what I could describe as a traditional Navy experience for that time where, you know, you just went on your deployment for six months, you were in port for 18 months. And then when was that? That was, that was, that was before I got to the ship. Cause when, when I checked on board, it was on deployment. And then it felt like we'd uh, sometimes never, other than the yard periods, we were, we were out the, all the time, yeah. We were out. I'd see it seem seemed like a lot, yeah. I mean, when I liked it, uh, I enjoyed it. When Sedlicek said, like, as we got out of the yards, he was basically moving on on the ship because I hate my family. <laughs> like, we're gonna be underway if I can help it. No, like, yeah. I don't. I don't mean to do the sidebar, yeah. but like, there's a clear definition between Chief M, my chief, and Chief S. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, oh for sure. And those two periods of time were completely different yeah but and 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 i also a year after getting there everybody that we loved was leaving like because masha vecchio mims and oh god i don't want to mention the other guy's name but those three all in my division made chief and hep hep was in my uh, no well yeah because he became kind of like the uh, force protection chief so like they all three left except for hep hep stuck around for a little bit longer because uh, after Harvell left, I took over Harvell's spot doing the whole AT tray soup, you know, spraying people with pepper spray roll. Um, so that was cool. But yeah, yeah we lost Mims, we lost Mashavecchio, and the other chief that we had, uh, and Hep. We, we lost all those in, like the first year after I got there. Oh, he's like Hep, STG yeah. guy, right? He was, yeah, yeah, he was a yeah. dude. I liked him. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Do you play guitar? I don't no. think no. Harvell played guitar. Harvell played. 
because we jammed together. But so which ship had, cool. uh, had the best food? Your first ship or the Donald Cook? No, Donald Cook by far. Mongolian night or whatever it was. <laughs> that was fantastic. Yeah. Man. No. And they really um, got their shit together towards the end. Of, of the like, it was crazy. Like when they, I don't even remember who, I, I wish I remember what her name was. She came on board. I think she was a CS1 or a CS2 or something. And it was like, you guys don't do this. And next thing you know, we got spaghetti noodles getting rolled in teriyaki sauce. <laughs> oh, man, that's fantastic. <laughs> Man, it's fantastic. And like, like, they express up shit. in there, dude. Yeah, yeah, dude. It was, and they were whipping it up. They had big ass chopsticks in there. No, they yeah. were just the spatulas. <laughs> no, the street poor. I, I, I always try to give people credit. Hand. Like <laughs> CSs have a job to do, SHs have a job to do, and they try and do the best job they can with what they're given. And on the street port, we just didn't get a lot of the stuff that you guys got on the cook, like. In the mornings, we never got eggs to order on the street fort. It was always. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. Man. And you really. I with AWOL. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once I heard what the guy in the, <laughs> the ship next to me was getting out of left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was just a, uh, what do you call ice cream scoop of like scrambled eggs is what you got on the street fort. So, like, wow. when I got to the Donald Cook, it was completely different. And talking about, can, can I just talk about something that my first day checking in, you have to do that check in with the captain thing. So I, I, I walk up, you know, prison, you know, pay officer Duggar reporting thing and captain Granger, you know, he, he invites me in. He, he's like really cool, you know, allows me to relax a little bit. He's like, Hey, I understand that you're coming from an all male ship. This is a co-ed ship. You need to watch what you say because females are on board now. You can't get away with some of the things that you say. And I'm like, okay, gotcha, sir. No problem. He's like, you're a more senior second class. You're seasoned. You've got you know, four deployments under your belt. You, you need to mind your P's and Q's. I'm like, I got you, sir. You won't have a problem out of me. He's like, okay, you know, go grab some chow. It's lunchtime, you know, um, and, and welcome aboard. So I go down to the mess line and, you know, nobody's in line. So I just kind of pick and choose what I want, you know, and then, and I go and I sit down and pretty much the mess decks are pretty much clear, except for a group of females that are sitting at a table. And, you know, I, you know, I just happen to sit at the first table and I hear them talking and they're like, oh yeah, this ketchup bottle, that's about as big as I like it. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? I'm supposed to watch what I'm saying. And this is the first conversation that I walk into. And I'm like, what in the you gotta be kidding me. And I don't know if they were like, just because I was the new guy kind of like trying to break me in or something. I don't know, but like, I don't have a good poker face in scenarios like that. And I was just like, what the, okay. All right. Welcome to the Donald cook. <laughs> so, you should have flipped it upside down. So that's the way I like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or turned it sideways. <laughs> <laughs> man yeah oh my god <laughs> no because like we had maybe on the street for i think we had four females and they were all officers our our it officer our chaplain who i'll have to show you oh man i don't want to get anything edited out so i'll skip that but that's a funny story i need to follow up with you guys on um and then our Officer for the quartermasters, the navigator. Yeah, the navigator was a female, and I think one other female. Oh, weapons officer at one point was a female, but other than that, we had no females on board. So like, we didn't have like Hooters posters or calendars or anything like that posted. But yeah, it was definitely a lot different conversations were being held on my first ship than my than the McDonald's yeah. for sure. Yeah, I don't remember them talking at all about any of that when we were on board. Um, you know, I, well, I, we had I a, um, we had a poster or a calendar in spy. Uh, it was like an FHM or like a Maxim calendar. And, and we got told to take it down, um, by someone's wife. Well, that was the tip of the iceberg. I mean, look at it now, man. There's like, no, no, don't, don't, what, don't ask, don't tells uh, not even exist anymore. And 
Yeah, mm. that it's, I was at RTC for sure, duty when all that uh, when all that announcement came that Don't Ask, Don't Tell was going away, and that was an interesting conversation. We yeah. actually did that conversation in the chapel on base for all the staff. So that was very right. interesting. Yeah yeah. 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 No, I'm a, I'm a firm believer, man. Like whatever makes you happy in life, do, do you be happy with it? I, I'm not judgmental. Um, you know, a lot of things have changed in my life since getting out of the Navy. You know, I mean, I wasn't even expecting, I thought I was going to do 20, but I, you know, medically retired, having an injury and stuff like, um, Life throws you curveballs. You got to deal with enough crap. Why give other people a hard time because they want to choose a lifestyle? Like, whatever. Right. I don't care. Like, I just want people to be happy. I think we all need to spend a little time just being nicer to each other generally. Um, it, it's okay to pick. And I mean, my, my family's, you got to have tough skin to be in my family. You can't, if you don't have tough skin, man, you, you're not going to last very long. So um, picking at people, you know, having fun, that's great. But, uh, just generally be nice to each other, man. Yeah. Well, I like to stick on food, man. I used to be a chef. So what was your favorite meal uh, on board the cook and, and any least favorite meals? I'm a chicken man. So like when we had chicken wings, dude, I loved chicken. Wings Cause like once you make enough friends on a ship, you can kind of get things that, you, you know, you really like. So like when I would go through the mess decks, they would always hook me up with like an, a, an abundant amount of, of wings. So like, you know, if you were going to get 10 wings as the normal portion, I would come to the mess decks table with like 200 wings. I mean, they, they would hook me up. So I really liked uh, the chicken wings, which, um, if it's okay, can I break for a minute and tell a chicken wing story about Adam oh, and yeah. how we became, how, <laughs> and how, and how we became a little bit tighter um, friends. So you guys, and I'm talking about Josh, Drew, Joe, Adam, you guys kind of started um, the whole Hooters meeting up once a month, kind of like all you can eat wings. So I had been told, <laughs> hey, you guys, we're going to meet up at Hooters. We're going to eat wings. We don't bring girlfriends. We just hang out. We eat wings. We chit chat. We catch up. And so my girlfriend at the time was one of those, like, I would come home from deployment. I'd give her a call and we were back together or whatever. But dumb as a box of rocks. I mean, <laughs> just nothing special. Okay. But looked great. Okay. So she begged me, please let me go. Let me go. So. We go, she's sitting to my right. Adam is sitting across from me, okay? And Akuna is sitting to my left. And he was used to these kinds of questions. So he just kind of rolled with it. But she turns to me as straight-faced as possibly could. And she goes, hey, Jay, how many wings does a buffalo have? And Adam just, like, <laughs> dropped his chicken wing, like, and I don't know how many times knowing Adam, I've heard him say, you've got to be shitting me, but this was an Adam. You've got to be shitting me moment. So Adam just drops his chicken wing on his plate. is like, you've got to be shitting me. And Doherty, Doherty kind of puts his hands like this on his face. And he's like, yeah, Jay. Yeah, Jay. How many wings does a Buffalo have? And so, you know, I'm a smart ass. I'm like a hundred fifty on each side. And she's like, good answer. Oh, so what happens after you cut them off? And I'm like, oh my God. And, and Adam's just like, I mean, he's just, a, he's like, literally, I think going to punch her in the face. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, they just grow back. And she's like, oh, so that's why they're so fuzzy. It like protects the wings. And I'm like, yeah, that's why they're fuzzy. Yeah. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. But yes. Yes. That's why we, that's, that's, we yeah. don't even ask you to come with us. <laughs> 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 because... You're embarrassing yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to be telling stories about something completely different. And here we are now. Yeah. And now yeah. these guys are questioning. Yeah. Why I can spend yeah. five minutes with you. Yeah. So back to the, the Wait, ship. two things. Two things. Okay. Okay. Um, 
I'm glad all I said was, you got to be shitting me. <laughs> and number two, those Hooters, like once a month Hooters or whatever we did, those are pretty epic. And I miss. Dude, we had a lot of fun doing those. I we miss, had a lot of fun. I miss back in the days Hooters. I haven't been um, a Hooters. If I may step in and say, that was kind of an Andy and Storin thing. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. those two, and when I when I started sniffing around and found out that Andy and Storm were over there eating 75 wings at a time, that's when I was like, um, no fucking way are we putting on feats of strength and I don't get to watch firsthand while Storin sucks the fucking meat off of, you know, a, a generation of chickens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it's uh, only it's only a couple of buffaloes. Okay, it's like yeah, yeah, it's only a couple of buffaloes. <laughs> but I mean, you know, when you're thinking <laughs> like, oh, how often is you know? <laughs> and Andy's like, dude, I crush wings, store and fucking like genocides wings. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I went there and I watched him fucking kill all those wings, and then you know, it was Andy and Storm that started the Tuesday night. Okay. Buffalo wing extravaganza, and I, I horned in on it once I found out that these guys were putting Kobayashi numbers up. Yeah, Andy, I mean, Joey Jaws, Chestnut, Mattis. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say that the Donald Cook man, you guys had such a tight knit group of, um, yeah. I mean, just I, I mean, doing a lot. I mean, you would think that you would get sick of each other, but I mean, we just loved each other, man. We had such a great time. Anytime we got together, I mean, e- either doing something stupid or laughing at somebody or, you know, yeah, it was always such a great time, man. I came from a really small town, man, like, like really small high school and stuff. And it, it just seemed like that when I left, like I knew everybody's story. I knew people, you know, like their dads, their moms, you know, like, yeah. and not even, not even just like my, my, my regular friends, but like other dudes that like just happened to be on like, uh, like in my duty section. You yeah. know, like like just some random dude that I used to watch with, yeah. you know, be like, "Hey, how the kids doing?" Yeah, well, you know, blah blah blah. You know, this, yeah. you know, and I, I yeah, I, I just don't th- think you get that kind of stuff anywhere else. Yeah, you know, with only three hundred and some odd people or four hundred people or whatever it is that a destroyer has, but I mean, you know, you you yeah. learn more about everybody than just like you know the surface random bullshit yeah and then you also get to see them that they're like like their lowest points too you know like you get to watch yeah. a kid you get to watch a kid uh turn from like a decent sailor into a really shitty person over the course of like three months while they're cranking <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i think that a lot of the guys like we were really good at figuring out when somebody was having a tough time and just kind of whatever it was just stepping in and helping out man right because, like, Masha Vecchio, man, I told him, you know, and his wife, Angel. I mean, they're really great people. Um, my mom was bringing my son up. You know, I was divorced. My divorce papers, literally, the ink was dry the day that I actually went to the Donald Cook. So, like, that kind of shows you the, the progression of, like, who I was. Um, like, on the Donald Cook, like, I became single, so on and so forth. But, um my son, my mom was bringing my son up to, you know, Virginia so that I could see him. And I didn't really have a very big house. So Masha Vecchio and his wife opened up their home so that I could have a, a birthday party for my son. And we threw this big pool party. We had beer and, and food and everything. And that, I mean, to be that type of person to open your family up to like, man, that's just fantastic. And that's just what we did for each other. Stuff like that, you know? Yeah. And it meant a lot. What was the vibe like on the Shreveport, like comparatively, like crew wise? Obviously, like everybody says kind of the same thing about the cook that's been on multiple ships, that something about that crew, the way the the gel set in there. But you know, how was the Shreveport? Uh, the Shreveport was not bad. I, I did have a really good relationship with pretty much I mean, you it's a small crew, so you're you're really tight. Yeah. Um, but I would say the Donald Cook took it to a whole other level. I mean, we were we were good good friends on the on the Shreveport just because we were constantly deployed, man. I mean, like the deployment rotation versus 
you know, in port, it was not the way it should have been. I mean, we were just constantly gone because the LPDs that were working um, just constantly got redeployed because you had the Nashville, which spent like some ungodly amount of time in the yards. They were in the, like the yards for like two years. So there was no other choice with the working LPDs that were, that were still functional. Um, yeah. yeah. It, it was just, it was chaotic. And, and I'm not going to say that, you know, the deployment style or, or deployment rotations what killed my first marriage. That's not it. Cause my de- first marriage was done after the first deployment. So not even first deployment. Yeah. Um, it was like halfway through the first deployment. So, um, but I will say, um, it was slower paced, but we, we were gone. But the reason I say slower paced is like my watch station on the, the Shreveport was at the RCP, which is not, I mean, it's just lights. Yeah. And you just, you know, you'd take your government pen and change the light bulb. That was your watch station. Yeah. We were port and starboard, but the, the Donald cook, man, there was always something going on in combat. I mean, as far as like, we got this, that, or the other. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, we launched missiles while I was there. That was fantastic. So, yeah. Hell yeah. How many deployments did you do total between like both ships? Five. Shit. Man. <laughs> Five deployments. Yeah. All did you ever make shell back or anything? Uh, triple shell back. Yeah, I, I did. Uh, we, we did it twice. On the Shreveport, and I think we did it once on the Cook when I was there. Yeah. Cool. My second shellback ceremony was great because the first time I was on the receiving end, on the second time I was given it, and, and <laughs> that was before the whole you know nicer. Like we had the biggest guy on the ship. He had olives in his belly button. It was like the final station. And he had peanut butter all over his belly. So, yeah, like that was fun to watch, not being on the receiving room. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And a uh, shell back is just uh, crossing the equator for you, not right. military types, a uh, big naval tradition. Yeah, I've actually got that big, that big paper, um, the presentation thing that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, those things are awesome. I still have mine. Um, I wasn't a shellback though, but yeah. you know, for crossing the Suez and like, oh um, yeah, an excursion, all those cool things. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I remember all those. But unfortunately, I was never able to participate uh, in the shellback ceremony. Um, but that's awesome, man. Three times that must have been fun. Uh, what were some of your favorite ports? Any remem- memorable ones? Like, what was your like number one? Absolute favorite port, without a doubt, Barcelona, Spain. Man, that was, I mean, I think Spain in general, the people there generally more nice. Mm-hmm. Um, my first ship, the Shreveport, we actually got invited into a family's home and they like cooked for us and Damn. like, you know, busted out the family photo albums from World War II and stuff like that. Like it was a really genuinely nice experience. Um, and then, you know, Barcelona by far. I just had, I had my first deployment was the normal deployment. You go out, you get drunk every time you hit port. Like you don't do anything. Yeah. You don't right. get any souvenirs. You just, right. Right. you're just letting off steam because you're not used to what's what you don't know anything. So, um, but at the, the rest of the deployments, I kind of knew, Hey, I'm not going to spend my time in a bar. I'm going to let off some steam as well, but, um, <laughs> definitely not, the only thing I'm going to focus on, like the first place I, I would go is not the bar when I, you know, after my first deployment, um, my first deployment, I don't even think we went a hundred yards away from the ship. We just found the first bar and every time we'd leave, um, <laughs> Man, yeah, that's second, a shame. That's a shame. Yeah. And I missed a lot of really cool stuff on that first right. deployment, um, that I wished I had done the first deployment, but I kind of made up for it. The rest of the deployments knowing, that uh, that's not the most important thing but that's yeah of course Barcelona. part of the navy man is traveling and stuff when you think oh of, yeah when you think of it in terms of like rites of passage then getting messed up at every single port you go to is kind of a right 
rite of passage. Yeah, in the scheme of it. Well, if you look back at it too, like there was always that person that would say, "Hey, yeah, don't get drunk okay. in every port that you go to," and you still did it. it. You just, I think you have to do it. Your first deployment, get it out of your system, and then yeah. Well, that and uh, you know. No, I kind of lost my train of thought there for a second. Maybe come back to me later. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, Barcelona was great. Um, I got a lot of souvenirs from different places that I went. 37. I look back and, and on a map, and 37 countries I visited while I was in the Navy. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, man. Five deployments. That's a lot. That'll do it. So, what kind of souvenirs did you get? Anything cool? Anything memorable? Still um, oh, yeah. Like, um, second favorite port would be Seychelles. I know that some people say that, you know, oh, the service always sucked or, you know, it was a small island. I was that guy after my first deployment, I would just, me and my Liberty buddies, we would try and go as far away from the ship as possible. Find those niche little places, the unique things. And so when, that's after a my tip, first guys, that's a tip. Everybody, that's a tip. Yeah, get as far away from the ship, get as far away from Navy people as possible, and just be adventurous. Figure it out, you know. Um, so, I after my first deployment, we my second deployment, we went to Seychelles a couple of times, and we were just walking along the beach, and it just so happened that this guy walked up, and he's like, hey, for 20 bucks, I will get you a bottle of rum. <laughs> and I'll go catch a fish for you and cook it right here on the beach. So I was like, oh, that's awesome. Heck yeah. <laughs> so me and my two other Liberty buddies, I was like, hey, we're paying him 20 bucks a piece. This guy doesn't have money, man. We're going to take care of him. So he went out, sw- I mean, swam out. He didn't even have like a knife or anything. He just swam out, grabbed his fish, brought it back, <laughs> cooked it on the beach. Wow. Like, came back from somewhere i don't know where a hole dug in the ground or something and gave us all a bottle of rum a piece and it was like that local seychelles rum so it was he just asked us one question he's like do you want white or do you want brown and i was like i want to get you know fucked up so give me brown you know i i didn't know anything about rum so yeah it was that local seychelles rum and we sat there and ate fish until our heart's content just talking to this guy we knew didn't even know him from anybody and i mean it was a really great experience you know the guy grew up born and raised in seychelles and yeah that was a cool experience and so we did that every time every time we would go back i would try and find some local to do something (laughs) similar to that (laughs) you're just asking strangers hey go catch me a fish (laughs) do you want to have a moment with me (laughs) Yeah. yeah yeah i would be curious if they feel the same way you know i mentioned they do too you know I mean, from a civilian's perspective, maybe, I don't know. I think if you try and be polite and not, you know, an asshole, because, you know, think about people coming to our country and, and, you know, demanding things of us, right? Like, no, if you're nice, people are nice, but if you're a dick, people are going to be a dick. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and I generally had good experiences overseas. I think that the only place that I did have bad experiences were maybe because, you know, another ship had just pulled in and ruined the experience in that area or something. But Albania by far was like the, that and Oman. I mean, Oman's got to be number one worst place to ever visit (laughs) on the face of the earth. It seemed like every time we pulled in, they were doing, um, what's the heck? It's the, um, religious Ramadan. Ramadan. Oh my God. And it's just like, you know what? After the first time, uh, second time, maybe I just, if mm-hmm. it was, we pulled in Oman, I just wasn't leaving the ship. I was just like, you know what? I'll do beer on the pier. I'll, I'll, I'll have a sandwich on the mess decks. I don't care. I just, yeah, it, it was bother. just, yeah, it was just not that I want to hate on anybody's religious beliefs, but it just, they scared the crap out of you. They always made it seem like, you know, something bad was going to happen. And it's just like, eh. I just, I don't want to go to Hotel America. I'll just stay on the ship and drink yep. beer on the pier. Um, I'm going to start wrapping it up, Jay. Uh, f- appreciate this fucking great interview so far. Um, I just want to get some of the funner questions that I'd like out of the way. Sure. Uh, starting off, uh, 
back to the food thing. We, I guess we like our food here. Um, yeah. Do you remember your first meal outside of boot camp? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Flanagan's. Flanagan's. Nice. <laughs> yeah. My mom came up for boot camp graduation and brought my girlfriend at the time, first, uh, first wife. Um, and we went to Flanagan's because that was like somebody mentioned something about an Irish pub. So, yeah, it was terrible food. I do remember that. Um, but it was great atmosphere. Um, can you describe the ship smell? Well, I will say 100% for sure. The Shreveport had a completely different spell, uh, smell. I'm always curious. The Donald- about that too, yeah. Because we were an older ship we didn't have gas turbine generators we had boilers we had you know diesel generators i mean it was just a completely different smell um and it was an old ship man she was she was hanging on by uh you know a thin string there towards the end so um and it was a different lifestyle you had you know thousand marines on board so <clears throat> that brought a whole different funk to the ship you know um, <laughs> just because you've got that many people on an enclosed ship with poor ventilation. Yeah. Simple green doesn't even put any <laughs> dents into that smell. Um, but the, the Donald cook, I think the difference for me is we didn't have airlocks on the street port. So mm-hmm. it's like you guys vacuum sealed the shit inside the Donald <laughs> cook to where it's, <laughs> the funk just stayed inside and just got recirculated all the time so. it smelled like smart candy and gooch <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no it did, did have like i want to say it had a more plastic smell because like all the decks had that like here polyurethane that. or plastic rubber on yeah. it depending on the on the space too it, you know, have rubber like in sea whiz we had rubber flooring so it, it always had like a rubber smell to me is what I felt like. Um, yeah, for sure. And I mean, the living environment was a lot different too. Like I actually slept in my rack on the Donald Cook. Whereas on the Shreveport, I had a hammock in one of my sea whiz mounts and that's where I slept. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. And I was one of the more senior guys too. So like I wanted to, you know, and you know, LPO of the, the C was guys. So like I had to make sure that everything was done right. And my guys were kind of jokesters and always not really screwing up, but making really poor decisions. So <laughs> I would always get chastised for my C was text screwing up on the Shreveport too. So. Um, over here on the C stories podcast, we love our films. Check us, check out our YouTube channel. See my film. It's our movie club. Uh, I just want to ask, is there a film that reminds you of deployment? Yeah. So this is a funny story. When I got to the Donald cook that first, like, I think I did five months of the deployment with you guys. Uh, Chuck and Larry had just come out. Oh, <laughs> decent one so you you know i had a middle rack and on the other side of the rack there's that thin wall between the two racks yeah haney was on the other side of that rack okay so we you know we shared that wall well i had a huge crush on um jessica beetle <laughs> oh my god in that scene where she comes out all wet and her like oh man still to this day holy cow that's a great scene <laughs> But they would play that. I don't know what what it was, but they would play like the same movie and just wear it out to where if it was a VHS, it would be worn out in certain spots because, you know, <laughs> like, um, but they got stuck on Chuck and Larry and it was it was an OK movie, but they just got stuck on it. And it seemed like every time you pass by a TV, Chuck and Larry was on. Right. Well, I'll never forget one morning. I guess I had gotten a little too excited that night and. <laughs> Haney was on the mess decks with Masha Vecchio and, and they both just bust up laughing when they see me walk on the mess decks. And I'm like, Hey guys, what's up? And, uh, Masha Vecchio like, well, your rack buddy wants to know what the hell happened last night. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I guess I got a little excited with that wall and Haney, Haney felt it on the other side. 
So you know, like a, a tin roof. <laughs> oh man. Uh two more questions. Um Okay. We have an official uh back when we used to be the average G.I. Joe podcast, we have a average G.I. Joe podcast playlist filled with songs recommended by uh <clears throat> our guests. Uh are there mm-hmm. three songs that remind you of the Navy? Oh man. Unfortunately, yeah. Um <laughs> Wild Wild West will never come out of my mind ever. I mean, I'll always remember that song. Are these breakaway from, songs? That's Bill Parker played that freaking song every time we did anything. Wait, wait, wait. Wild Wild West. The the Will Smith version? Yes. 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 What? Absolutely ridiculous. We can wild, we can we can we... Yes. Wild West, Jim West, Desperado. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it was embarrassing. Okay. Yeah, okay. That, all right, add it to the list. It's a good song to add to the list. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, a special moment in my life happened on the Donald Cook. Um, you know, we had worked really, really hard to get that BBSS certification. And it was, I, if I remember correctly, it was like three days straight of like two hours of sleep. Um. I mean, there were great guys on that team, like Sejas and Wynn and Baker and a lot of, you know, guys. I mean, we just really came together and had a really good experience doing that. Really funny moments, too, during that during that whole training session on that. It's a special ship that they set up for this boarding. And so you, you get your boarding certifications doing this. And uh, when we came back after that third day of completing it and, and finding out, you know, we had the debrief on that ship. They told us, we, you know, you're certified. It was a huge accomplishment, I felt like. And when we came back, they played um, the song from Top Gun, you know. Uh, yeah. and, and so, like, uh, this is so stupid. But his his call sign on our boarding team was T-Bag. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he calls over the radio to the captain. Sir, this is T-Bag requesting a flyby. And so they did the whole requesting a flyby skit. Like, <laughs> and we, so with the rib, with the rib, we kind of like passed in front of the ship and the whole thing was play, song was playing. That was, that, that's a memory that for me, that's a, that's a song that will always stick with me just because of that moment. Hilarious. Um, and then Mama, I'm Coming Home by uh, Ozzy Osbourne just because it seemed like they always played that song when you were pulling into port standing at parade rest for like seven hours when you really only needed to be out there for like 30 minutes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's probably going to be burned into my mind for the rest of my life. Um, yeah, those three songs are probably anytime those come on certain, you know, memories flash back in my mind, awesome. which, yeah, that's my take on the, the three songs that stick out. That's what we want. And what I do is I add those three songs to the playlist and those are available for everybody to listen. Um, last question. Sea Stories podcast premiere question. And I, I get this. I got this from Andy and I think about it every time and I wish I could answer or ask every guest this. But, um, you know, we just went through your history in the Navy, all your careers, boot camp, training, fleet life, deployment, everything. If I were to ask you, what was the real Navy, what would your answer be? Um, so, no bullshit. Knowing how to, knowing how to play the game. That's the real, the real Navy. And it's whether, you know, you just want to do your time and get out. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, or if you want to stay in for the long haul there's things that you need to learn to be successful um, in either, either facet. Like you could be the greatest top side rover ever, or, you know, the, the greatest burden cleaner ever. And, that, and that's your, Hey, I don't put anything against anybody's service. If you served and you did your time, Hey, I'm happy for you. But uh, there's a lot of things that if you just, 
play the game, man, you can get really far. Um, I look at it like this. I, I There's things that I genuinely think that the Navy needs to work on to make it to where you want to do longer. I think there's things that they do well. Um, I, I enjoyed my time in. I met a lot of really cool people. Um, I wish that I was better at contacting people and reaching out. Um, but I'm really good at figuring out via whether it's Facebook or, um, you know, the different social medias I'm even on, uh, together we served. And from time to time, I'll get a (laughs) message on there, you know, like just because I want to make myself available because you never know the demons that are going on in somebody's mind. And if somebody wants to reach out to me, I'd rather make myself accessible to save them some sort of mistake or heartache or something like that so i'm really good at picking up on that stuff and so i've spent hours on the phone with people just trying to like help them get through a situation um but i wish i was better at reaching out to people that you know are genuinely good people i just man you just get tied up with you know all kids and everything else you just it's not that they're not important it's just you got so much shit on your plate already you know but genuinely i mean this like uh, whoever's listening to the podcast, there's a lot of really good people out there that care. You're, you're probably going through something. They've probably gone through it or know somebody that's gone through it, man, reach out. Cause there's always somebody there to, to listen to you and work, work through the problem. That's fucking awesome. Um, yeah, like I couldn't remember quite when you checked on the, on the Donald cook, I thought you would have met every one of the guys, but if you, if you were on the Donald Cook with these guys, you guys, you would have fit right in, Jay, with these guys. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, like, yeah. I, even, I could tell by this interview. Um, 100%. Before we get into the beer reviews, uh, does anybody got any last minutes for Jay? Mm. Did you uh, Did you want to stay in for 20 years? I did. I got medically retired in uh, 2013. So... I broke my leg on that last appointment we did um, on the Donald Cook, and I didn't know it. Um, I I don't even remember what was going on. Maybe it was a boarding or something like that. But I just remember sitting in combat, and like my leg was black and blue and swollen, like really bad. But anyways, fast forward to getting orders to RTC. I was originally slated to be an, an RDC. And I was doing the initial PRT and one of the chiefs was like, Hey dude, your leg is swelling up really bad. You need to go to medical and get it checked out. That was a Monday. I ended up having reconstructive surgery on my right leg on that Thursday. Oh, they wow. had to, they had to re-break both of the, the, the bones in my lower leg, uh, put a bunch of pins and stuff in it to, to, to reset the bone cause it had healed improperly. And then both sides of my, um, tendons they had to reattach with uh they had to cut them off shave the bone and reattach them with titanium clips to 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 fix everything so um there was a long med board process which took pretty much two and a half years of my my shore duty time to kind of go through the med board process i was fighting it trying to stay in but um ended up getting medically retired because of it it was just the, the risk was they were afraid that if i got deployed there wouldn't be a facility to be able to fix some of that stuff. So it was kind of thrown on my, my plate. And I know that I've heard you guys mention this before on previous podcasts. Um, you spend that much time in the Navy. You think that they could spend a little bit more time prepping you for the civilian side for, I think tap class was four days when I went through it. Yeah. That's not enough time, man. They really need to do a better job at you give so much of your life to the Navy. Uh, they need to spend more time uh, for sailors getting out of the Navy because um, I ended up, I'm, I'm okay now. Uh, I've got a pretty decent career, but I feel like it was a check in the box for the Navy. Oh yeah. And I think, I think that they, they need to, if anybody from the Navy ever listens to this, you need to do a better job with your sailors. You've got people that you're scaring the shit out of them for no apparent reason when they're they're making a big transition in their life 
do more to help them because when I got out, my resume was dog shit. And my, we're all FC, so we're pretty genuinely smart people. Um, it didn't set me up for real good success. I kind of had to learn through my first job in the Navy or after the Navy and, and working with somebody that was in the Navy for, he got, God love him. He got kicked out for being overweight at 18 and a half years of service. So yeah, there's that side of the Navy too, that this is disappointing that, you can wait till somebody's 18 and a half years yeah. in to do that. And then you got to um, kill them like that. Yeah. Jeez, man. Fucking but he and I became, up. he was on subs and he and I became really good friends. Uh, we got our first jobs together after the Navy and then kind of helped each other learn through the whole, how to navigate the yeah. civilian world together. So I say, it's always good to have a battle buddy to keep your mental health in check, especially. Oh, oh, I don't care if you did four years or 11 and a half years, there's still some mental, you know, gymnastics that you do just from being in for four years or 11 and a half, 20 oh, years, sure. 30 years, whatever that I, getting I a wonder, cut. Like, like while I, while I agree with that though, <clears throat> say that again, is, why, what I, I, while I agree with the idea of like, you know, we have to do something better to like get these guys like acclimated to, to real life. Um, how long do we need? Because I mean, there are people out there that are definitely very like dependent personality wise. And the Navy is, I mean, like the perfect, like, you know, like, I guess we'll just say nipple from like, high school to yeah, adulthood yeah. and then so I'm, and I'm, then and then how long do you need to wean these people off keep in mind like i'm also one of these people that needs a long weaning yeah so i'm glad i'm you 41 asked question because i had a master chief on my first ship that told me something that stuck with me to this very day don't just come up with a problem come up with a problem yeah. and a solution because if you just come to me with problems i've got problems all day that's not going to help me so I like to come up with a problem and a solution. Yeah. So we have higher tenure for each rank, right? Right. So yeah, if you're oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, if, if you're an E four, you can only do eight years. If you're an E five, you can only do fourteen. If you're an E six, you can do twenty. You know, E seven, you can do twenty five or whatever it is, and then uh, uh, keep going, right? right? Mm -hmm. So with your higher tenure, if you do four years, then just pick pick three weeks. If 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 and and. It's not like the Navy's going to lose money on this. They've already invested four years in. If it's six years, whatever, just pick a certain amount of time to get these people acclimated to, hey, you're about to make a huge transition. You're not going to have health insurance anymore. You're not going to, like, you're going to make, you're not going to be relying on the Navy to do everything for you. And that's something that I think the Navy coddles everybody is because you don't have to worry about insurance. You don't have to worry about all these things that, on the civilian side, I mean, HR, God, you know how many times I'd have been in the HR office of, in the Navy if we had anything like that? My you, God. But what I think they should do, I think that there should be a, a separation of jobs that you have in the Navy and the type of uh, transition you, you take. Because oh, okay. not, I mean, like, and the reason I say that is because I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to like attack anybody's, you know, rate whatever they chose or whatever. Yeah. But, um, you know, if you come from a really technical rate, they should have people that are like, hey, just let you guys know, like, you may want to think about, you know, like getting like this kind of certification or this other thing. Meanwhile, they can have you know, other rates or something that are more, maybe not as technical where it maybe require, yeah. maybe it doesn't require yeah. a, uh, you know, like a top of secret clearance or something, yeah. you know, um, like, Hey, like half your job is welding. Like maybe you guys should focus on like a school like this yeah, and maybe a career this way and not, and not have guys from like CVS coming out of here telling you about running a fucking store <laughs> or Virginia beach. I don't know. I kind of disagree with you, Joe. And the reason I disagree with you is you've got people like Drew, for instance, who he was an FC. 
But when he got out of the Navy, he wanted nothing to do with electrical stuff. He wanted nothing. While to do I understand that, while I, 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 I get that too, you always will have those outliers. But given the opportunity to be like, hey, man, like, like you have these kind of like certifications already on the books. Yeah. Like it only take it, it, maybe you don't like electronics or electricity or any of that stuff, but like here's an easier path on a way to make right. you know like seventy five thousand dollars outside of the navy immediately versus you know walking around and being like you know what man maybe I'll just you know uh, pull cable out of like old buildings for a year. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think there's an easy way to do it. Is just colleges do this all the time they have job fairs they have 50 companies or whatever come on to the base do some some training on this is what our company is about these are the opportunities we have uh more advertisement into education after the navy if you're interested in that there's a lot of jobs in this country right now and technical skills that i mean we need plumbers we need mechanics we need electricians right now I'm my company. I'm working for a company where we're building the plant as we speak. We're hiring people and we cannot find people. There are technical jobs out there that you can make a really, really nice living. I would like to see the Navy do something where they just bring companies in technical colleges, regular colleges, hell, just do a huge job fair. And, and you've got all this. You've got a huge base. You got plenty of space to do these things. Yeah. It wouldn't take any setup. And then you got another collateral duty for somebody that's on shore duty instead of handing out fucking basketballs. <laughs> they can go and set this up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like no, or playing and top then, class around a job fair. Yeah. Exactly. Well, exactly. Comes up every oh. once. Yeah, but they don't. They don't want you really to get out. They're not gonna. They're, that's that's almost like encouraging you to get out though. Too. You know, it's like making it somewhat well um, i think i still agree uh, with you i think if you make that choice you made that choice to get in you're making that choice to get out they should support you in that choice correct correct yeah you know i'd like to chime in on that like the transition thing you know i think what we're really talking about is like preparing you for for getting out you know like joe <clears throat> prepare people for understanding like your job can give you these other jobs outside of the military. Right. I think there's a big prepare difference them. between. I think that's seen going means. out there for a world in an SK. Well, I'm if, we're, if, we're, if we're loaded into the same, like, you know, um, conversation is like, you know, well here they brought in companies. We all went to that class. Yeah, and, 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 and the tech class or whatever, and they brought in those companies or whatever, and it was like, you know, he could be a CVS manager. Like, okay, I guess I could, but right. at the same time, like, I could also, you know, take thirty hours of community college courses and uh, <clears throat> be a certified this, and then I could just go to work for this guy that would much rather yeah. have me, and I could make you know sixty thousand dollars a year. But I think what the problem is is that you don't know how to use those benefits to get that. Right. And I right. think that's where the stress and the transition okay. come in, right? Like if you had the knowledge and the resources, it would be a lot less stressful. You would deal with it a lot better. Yeah. But yeah. If you go out, you don't know how the fuck to use your VA benefits. Double you know, are the or, perfect you know, people to have it. <laughs> yeah. You know, to, to uh, register with your local clinic. You don't know to like look into yeah. disability stuff. No one tells you that shit. So you're just floating around in space with no idea who to look for and who to go to. Yeah. And then you think anyone who wants to help you is going to take advantage of you. So the, that's the stressful part of it. Like it's not, it doesn't matter what you did in the military. That's a whole yeah. other se separate yeah. thing. You know, uh, you're being prepared to be a uh, civilian is a different. I was just looking at like moving into the job sector. No, I, I, I think I understand. Actual what separation Joe... of the military. Yeah. I'm talking about this like, like the, job sector like you know hey you guys should definitely tell me more about like you know how to like prepare for a job like maybe in like the tech sector yeah mm -hmm. yeah i i, I get what joe's trying to say he's saying that different jobs in the navy have different technical you know experience and so mm -hmm. they shouldn't be going to the same you know companies but i disagree because technically i i could use an sk right now because i've got to manage a million dollars worth of spare parts for all the equipment in my plant. 
I could use an SK to do some of that stuff. So, you know, yeah. the thing is, is you have to mind blown. You have to have somebody that is willing to show you what's out there with your rate, because I've gone to job fairs and I know that some people don't like the, the military headhunters. Like I don't want to mention the company's names cause I don't know if, if you'll get a copyright slam or anything like that, but there are companies that are recruiting firms that solely work with transitioning military people. And there, and there are some good ones out there Yeah, and they help transitioning military people find jobs and they do a decent job, but they're also, in the business of making money. So they're going to sometimes stick people in jobs that they really shouldn't be or whatever. But if we did a better job as veterans, when people are coming out, like, Hey, this isn't really the right fit for you, but we can find something else for you. I try to do that with, with veterans that I meet at job fairs that I go to like, Hey, you're, you've got a huge thing bullet points you've got experience real world experience doing your job you just need to learn how to sell yourself learn all the ins and outs of what to expect in the civilian world because you never had to worry about getting fired unless you did something really stupid in the military right yeah so i don't want to beat a dead horse but i just think that mental health wise va wise you know transitioning out of the military wise we just do a shit job of setting people up for success even if it was a dirt bag don't just give up on them try and set them up because they represent the military when they get out whether it's army navy marine corps whatever they're still representing that service when they get out do a better job of setting them up for success hey man yeah we got serious for a minute sorry but it is yes we do need to take care of ourselves we never figured out how to bring it up so we could get into swing, swing right into the beer reviews, which is totally oh, not, yeah. not as serious. Yeah, <laughs> this is right. what we drink. <laughs> yeah. Oh, with that being said, I'll kick it off again. Once again, the theme of the episode was beer that made you like drinking beer. Something along those lines. Yeah. And like I said, I went with Blue Moon. I still remember my first Blue Moon was at Keegan's. Um, yeah, and like Drew was saying when he introduced his beer, it's like it was the first time I realized that there's more to beer than you know water and getting fucked up. And with that, I chose Blue Moon. I'm still, you know, I'm a real craft brew guy these days. I, I like my hazy IPs and stuff. And with that being said, I can't rate your Anheuser Busch's and your Millers that high. And I consider Blue Moon Brewing Company amongst them. So I'll, I'm going to give it a 3.5 just because there's like killer craft breweries out there that will rank much, much higher. Uh, Andy, why don't you, why don't you uh, remind everybody what you were drinking and give yeah. us your rating? I was drinking Old Reliable Miller Lite. You know, mm-hmm. since I couldn't find a Miller Genuine Draft, I don't know if they still brew that or what <laughs> but, you know it's somewhere out there in the ether i'm sure i only uh, see it in the cans andy so next time you're in the store look for it in can that's the only time i see mgd so yeah it's it's t- like i feel like i've seen it maybe twice in the last 10 years <laughs> but food line did not have it you know i figured if i went lower shelf maybe i'd find it but i don't know anyways um you know because again i went the you know, youthful drinking days, often underage or whatever else. But it was like, you know, it was Miller Genuine Draft was kind of one of the common ones we'd have and was like, I guess it was a gateway beer for us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you cut your teeth on getting used to actually drinking beer. It was, it was either that or Natty Light, and I felt like, you know, I'd try and class it up, but <laughs> couldn't find the uh, MGD. Um, I mean, rating wise, you know, I, I got, you could go three, five or four L. Cause I mean, like you can take it anywhere. It's, you know, going to go over fine. You're not going to make any new friends, but you're not going <laughs> to make any enemies bringing right. the light <laughs> to a party. So, 
you know, pretty solid. Um, yeah, Drew, I know you're drinking the 60 minute. Oddly enough, the only dogfish that I actually liked is the 120, but I know that's also a rare one. So, wow. But I'll, I'll pass it to you. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, again, I was drinking um, Dogfish Head 60 minute IPA. It uh, is a very low 6% AVB, um, you know, so that's definitely under, you know, for what I normally go with. Um, I don't know. I don't really want to hate on this beer, but I think I'm going to try. Um, you know, I think me and Adam have, like, pretty similar tastes in beer, um, and and I, I'm going to kind of piggyback off of what he's saying. Um, you know, I feel like this is kind of like an intro to, like, a craft beer, and almost like... To me, it doesn't have as much depth as the craft beer nowadays. So, um, you know, while it is good, it isn't anything really special to me right now. You know, like I think there's a lot more flavor, a lot more depth out there with the beers. Um, so I'm going to rate this a three. Um, yeah, um, still still pretty solid. But again, it, it feels like an amateur beer to me. Like it feels like you're going to this is like the Bud Light of you know years. And, yeah yeah in the so, pantheon I get it yeah you know but overall pretty solid man can't really hate on it but i tried joe what'd you say the abv was on that six six percent jesus i think the yeah. abv on the spud was about 14 <laughs> <laughs> but that's what the king of beers usually brings yeah <clears throat> No, in all seriousness, uh, you know what you're getting when you grab a when you grab a, the red can. Yeah. You know the look. You know the taste. You know what's going to happen. Drew used to give me all sorts of shit when we were <clears throat> young bucks about me drinking shitty beers all the time. So I have no problem with it. I love those things. Those are. That is who Joe DeCavill is. Joe DeCavill is a shitty beer guy. <laughs> but again, like I said, this is Budweiser. We know where we are. We know what it what it brings to the table. That being said, 4.0. Jesus Christ. You know what it is, dude. I don't know why this is such a surprise to you. Like, you know what it brings to the table all the time. Everybody has no problem with it. It's Bud Weiser. I People agree, like dude. Bud Light that don't want to get out in public will grab Bud Weiser and be like, I like my beers full bodied. Yeah. Like, they are like cornballs about it. Dude, for, for sure, dude. Bud Weiser is a good beer, it's a king of beers. It's the king of beers. I mean, seriously, like, this is the beer that built America. What do you want me to tell you? You know it. Yeah. And for, for the purpose of what we've just done today, yeah, it should be a high-ranked beer. It raised you, it raised you, it raised you, and it raised you. <laughs> be thankful. Some countries, they don't even have beer. They have to drink salt water. Drink <laughs> salt water. <laughs> Sparingly, <laughs> because yeah. of dehydration. Yeah. Holy shit, oh, pass okay. it to Josh already. <laughs> so he <laughs> could give <laughs> an <laughs> equally long. Well, I was drinking the Mickey's. On the log. <laughs> and um, it's got a 5.6 ABV. And they do want you to know that they never use high fructose corn syrup. But um, I enjoy it, man. The Mickey Grenades are the best. The 40s, they're fun. But the Grenades and the six-pack, those are the way to go. They're cool to take to a party. People are like, what are these? You're like, dude, they're glass juice packets, man, you know? <laughs> no. The people just like them. People don't look them. I always get when I check out with them at the store, people are like, What are these? And I'm like, Do you gotta try them, man? They're good beers. And less than six dollars a six pack. Oh, yeah, five something a six pack. And they always have them in stock. <laughs> I cannot just not get them. 
Anyways, I'm going. I know everybody's been writing their stuff high, and I was concerned about writing because I had already talked to myself about rating my beer. But I'm going to go with 3.75, dude. I like this beer, man. It's, it's banging. It's good. It is good, though. <laughs> All right. Well. Better than Budweiser. <laughs> Jay, it's your turn, man. Oh, Jay. Uh, yeah. So I was drinking. Uh, you can't really see. I got to put it in front of me, I guess. Yeah. Coors, the banquet of beers, or as we called them growing up, Yellow Jackets. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, it's not Drew's typical like twenty five percent alcohol by volume. It's only five. <laughs> I, every time I listen to this podcast, Drew's drinking something. It's just like Jesus Christ, man! Just drink fucking whiskey. It'd be fucking better for you. High octane. I don't know how I make um, it to the end. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Um, I'm not a a craft beer guy, so I got to explain that. Like, I, my typical beer is a Coors Light. Um, if it's not Coors Light, it's Coors. Um, and if it's not one of those two, uh, I'll have a Stella or, um, you know, I'll drink a Corona from time to time, you know, but um, <clears throat> it's all dependent upon the occasion. So, like, I, we just took my kids for the first time for sushi this weekend, and I had a Sapporo, and it was fantastic. It's a good uh, I, I, Yeah. Um, but I'm not a craft beer guy. I don't I don't know how you guys do it. Um it's just not my thing, man. I, I I grew up on on Coors and Coors Light, so um, I, I want to get invited back. So I'm going to be reasonable <laughs> with my scoring. So I think it, I I think it's it's a decent three. It's something that you can drink all night. You can drink it every weekend. It's it's reliable. Uh, the thing about Coors, if you don't know, Coors is transported and stored cold from start to finish, so it is never warm. We knew that. Well, some of yeah. us did. Yeah. Yeah. But for those listeners out there that, you know, are, are coming up and trying to be salty dogs like us, like that's something you need to know about Coors Banquet is it's from start to finish cold. So I don't know, I crushed um, the tour in Golden, Colorado. Yeah. I'm I've never lying. been. I want to go. Yeah, I want to oh, go. Oh, dude, man. Come through Kansas, man. Let's roll together. <laughs> I, went to, uh, I went to the Sam Adams Brewery when I was in the Navy on my first ship. And that was an experience. I don't think that they are the same after us leaving there. Um, <laughs> because, uh, it was just a, an awesome experience. They treated us like royalty. Um, those are some fantastic moments in life that you can look back on and normal people don't, I mean, even college people that went to college don't have some of the experiences that we got to experience. Um, very unique experiences. But I, I'm going to give it a three. Uh, I genuinely enjoy it. It's it's something that you can drink all night long. Look, I just want to say that I'm always going to give the utmost respect to Coors, bud. All those beers. But the craft brew scene is very good these days. Yeah, absolutely. I will never rank Coors and all those higher than the three. But I'm never going to rank them lower than the three. Like, that's my medium and that's my barometer i guess is what i'm saying yeah like is it better than the coors or is it not better than the coors i mean it's it's my go-to i would yeah, yeah. rather have a coors or coors light than anything else i mean we have all kinds of local breweries around here I, you know i'm currently living in illinois my wife's a teacher so we're gonna wait till she gets retired to do whatever mm -hmm. but uh um yeah i mean you can keep your your craft beer beer i'll, <laughs> I'll drink a coors or coors light man or whiskey. I like whiskey with a, on the rocks, straight up. No, no Coke or mixers or any of that yeah. bullshit. Just give it to me straight, man. Hell yeah. We need to do a whiskey show. I know, right? That'd be sick. With all that being said, uh, check out the Average G.I. Joe, Joe podcast official Spotify playlist for all the music we've accumulated so far, including today's. Um, check us out on C... Check out C-Stories on Instagram at C-Stories Pod. And, uh, you know, if you like movies and <laughs> this type of humor, uh, <laughs> listen to our movie club on YouTube. YouTube.com slash at C-Stories Pod. Uh, say goodnight, everybody.
Yeah, yeah, this was a blast, guys. Thank you so much, man. I love the podcast. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you're gonna I think you're gonna really take off when you uh, when you get some more listeners, man. This this has been a a blast to listen to. Yeah, we look forward to having you back for sure. Uh, yeah, man. Good night.